Gentlemen, thanks so much. What a ball game there in Atlanta. I'll tell you, we got off to a fiery start here in Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado tonight as the two teams came out on the field following the coin flip. Both teams, and I mean the entire bodies, went to the center of the field. Coaches and officials had to come out. We almost had a brawl before this thing got started. That's the way both clubs feel about the other. Oklahoma, three downs and out. They punted Colorado. First offensive possession for them tonight. Lamont Warren inside the 40, and he is down to the 39. This is what we were referring to, Mike, as far as the two clubs coming on the field tonight. And... They wanted to get a close look at each other and do some early talking. Heavyweight fight. They want to look in the eyes of the other fighter. You see the officials doing an excellent job of keeping the teams apart. Also, the coaching staffs, they came out of the locker room and realized they were going to have to go to midfield and do some work early. As you look at Bill McCartney, 11 years as the head coach here of the Buffaloes. Play action. The freshman throws it complete. That's... Embry, the tight end, he will have it to the 35-yard line, and it appears he is a little bit short. Sean Embry, a junior from Inglewood, Colorado. Ron, for the people who have just joined the telecast, Les Steckle, the offensive coordinator, has really just done a marvelous job here at the beginning of the game, getting Coy Detmer in the rhythm of the football game. A lot of short passes, draw game, but making him feel comfortable and having success early. Correa and Embry, two tight end alignment for the Buffaloes. And it's with Warren, and he is not going to have it, I don't believe. David Campbell, a sophomore out of Oklahoma City, Millwood, hit him at the line of scrimmage. He got penetration, Mike. Well, Ron, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. The only complaint I have about the one-back set is in short yardage. You need to bring a second back in or a tight end in motion for a lead blocker on a short yardage play because you don't have a lead blocker. James Hill will come into the lineup. Junior fullback, 6 feet, 210, out of Colorado Springs. And he will join Lamont Warren, number 12. Fourth down, Colorado, less than a yard. Warren hit at the line of scrimmage and fights his way forward. Mike Coates is the man who hit him. And Michael knew he got just enough inside the 35 to pick up the first down, he thinks. But now from the marking of the ball, they're not going to give it to him. Colorado brought the extra back in. James Hill, number 33. You're going to see him lead block here, but he never got to the point of attack. Number 41, Mike Coates steps up and makes the tackle. Oklahoma gets the football. Oklahoma defense holds. So it is a fourth down try for the Buffaloes, and they are not successful. No score. Ten minutes and one second left to play in this opening quarter. The Kansas Jayhawks have forged their way on top by way of winning this afternoon in a wild affair, 50 to 47. So they are 2-0 in conference play. And by virtue of that, sitting to top the Big 8 Conference this evening. Here you see Mike Berry, the offensive line coach of Colorado, just going over the blocking adjustments of the last series. Gundy straight ahead to Rashid, works the legs. He will have three, now four yards. And right now, let's meet the starters, the Energizer starting lineups for the Oklahoma Sooners tonight. If there's one guy that has to be good tonight for Oklahoma to win, Kenyon Rashid, they've got to be able to rush the football. The wide receivers, Corey Warren, what a game he had against Texas last week. Nine receptions, 187 yards, and a good offensive line for the Sooners. Paul Moriarty, the left tackle, probably the most seasoned veteran of the group. Gundy with the play action, seals the linebackers, throws the pass. It is complete to Williams. Duell Brewer, I beg your pardon, out of bounds inside the 45-yard line as Brewer got free in the flat, good for 17. 
Let's meet the Buffaloes on defense. Leonard Renfro, number 99, one of three very fine down linemen for the Buffs. The linebackers, they may be as good as any in the country. Watch 56 tonight. You might think they had more than 156 on the field. And in the secondary, this is a hard-hitting Colorado secondary. Ronnie Bradford, the pros think, will play on Sunday. They really like him. Rashid. Two, maybe three yards in the vicinity of the 42-yard line. That's Leonard Renfro, big number 99, the gentleman we were just talking about. Mike, he had a really fine game against Missouri, the game that we televised last Thursday evening. He's a solid defensive lineman. Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma, told me that Leonard Renfro was somebody that he was concerned about in the matchups tonight. We mentioned Oklahoma, three downs and out. The first time they touched the football, but now across midfield. The last two years that they played Colorado, they have scored on the opening series. Drills the pass, has it complete, and it could be enough for the first down at the 34-yard line. Gundy right on the money to Albert Hall. When you see Oklahoma come to the line of scrimmage, all of a sudden Colorado has jumped into the 46 defense and man coverage on the outside. Now, on Albert Hall, you have two players really defending against him. You see the two defenders, one's inside and outside, but still a well-thrown ball by Keel Gundy to Albert Hall. Mike, is that going to be somewhat of an automatic for Oklahoma when Colorado shows the bear? Without a doubt. When they see the 46, they'll bring everybody in the block and have a two-receiver out. Flag goes down as Williams will be hit and pushed back at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> A procedure call against the Sooners. Got an interesting matchup tonight with a veteran quarterback in Kiel Gundy against the kid, Coy Detmer, on the other side of the field. And it's a quarterback's game tonight. No motion. Offense. Penalty decline. Second down. A lot of decisions to be made tonight by the quarterbacks because both teams will jump into fronts and the quarterback's decisions are going to be uh, most important tonight on checking out of different things. Good look at Coy Detmer right there. Freshman from Mission, Texas. A true freshman. He has helped Colorado come from behind in a couple of games, but tonight his first start. And Gundy wants a timeout. So we'll take it with him. 7.52 left in this opening quarter. No score. If atomic particles had been square instead of round, it probably wouldn't have happened. If it had been a wet cell instead of a dry cell, it's doubtful. And if the positive terminal had been negative, who knows? There might never have been a battery called Energizer or the Energizer Bunny. But luckily, everything happened just right. Stay within the line. The lines are our friends. Stay within the line. Stay within the line. The lines are our friends. Introducing the world's first V6 crayon. Are you listening? The Isuzu Rodeo. Built to go way outside the lines. Something to drink, sir? Uh, yeah, make it a Bud Light. Sorry, we just ran out. Oh. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Bud Light? Try Flight 261 out of L.A. Oh, oh, thank you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Uh, do you have a Bud Light? Yes. Welcome aboard, sir. Great. Where are we going? ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. And by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. 
We're back in Boulder, Colorado. Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. We'll be getting a report from him shortly. The big guy down on the sidelines with us as usual. Gundy tries to set a screen and wow. Wolfork is just all over. Ron, give the credit to the Colorado defense because they baited Kale Gundy. You'll see all the movement at the line of scrimmage by Colorado, and they were trying to make it look like blitz. Kale Gundy checked off to the screen pass. They dropped back in zone and were able to get the sack. Ron Wolfork and Brian Diet. So, with a loss of 10 in the play, it's going to be third down, and the line to make for the Sooners is the 24-yard line. Second clock down to one, but he got it away. But he will not get away from Leonard Renfro, number 99. This is a matchup you need to look at all night. The offensive line of Oklahoma versus the defensive line of Colorado. Leonard Renfro just beats the block of the offensive guard, number 99. Kale Gundy never had a chance to get that ball off. Figures back in a single safety. Signals for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 15-yard line. 36 yards in the punt, and as we catch our breath, it gives us an opportunity to meet the starters on offense for the Colorado Buffaloes tonight. True freshman, Coy Detmer. Same last name as the Heisman winner. Some people say may even have more ability. Wide receiver, you won't get any argument here. Westbrook may be as good as there is in the country. And the offensive lineman, Jim Hansen, is the glue there. Two-year academic All-American, and he might be a Rhodes Scholar, or selected as one before this football season is over. Short drop over the middle. It is intercepted by Oklahoma. Walker back to the 25-yard line. Colorado came out on the first down to throw the football. They have a lot of confidence in Coy Detmer. This won't shake him, believe me. Drop back pass, he's, he leaves the first receiver his first choice, and Darnell Walker just steps in front of the intended receiver for the interception. Another look at Darnell Walker. Look at him break on the ball. Just a great break on the ball by Darnell Walker. Flags all over the place. Movement on both sides of the football. Penalty against Colorado. Tim Brando, what do you have for us, buddy? Ron, the last two times Washington has gone into Eugene, they have lost. Well... Mark Bruner finds Jason Shelley here as he gets away from trouble. Watch this catch. Yes, it counts. 114 left in the half. 14 nothing Huskies. 14 to nothing for the Huskies. They seem to find a way out of harm's way. By the way, he is now the starter. They're going to reverse this call also. Offense. See the Oklahoma line set. Look at the left guard. Just move a little, which drew the defensive line. The penalties on the left guard, Broderick and Roberson. So it's a first and 15. Pass over the middle is complete to Brady. And he will have the first down at the Colorado 14-yard line. 
What makes this play, Ron, is just a little cheap fake by Kale Gundy. Watch this little fake to the tailback. That holds the linebackers long enough for Ricky Brady, number 86, to just curl behind. Here's a second look. Kale Gundy throws the ball right into the tight end, number 86, for a big game. Brady had some injured ribs that he suffered against Arkansas State. He took a pretty good shot there, but seems no worse for the wear. Two tight end alignment for Oklahoma. One set back, two wide receivers. Pass looking for Williams over the middle. It is intercepted. Hudson will be tackled by Gundy. Oklahoma tried to split the coverage. They put Ernest Williams, number 20, in motion, then tried to go down the field to him, but just a poorly thrown ball. Chris Hudson picks it off, and then with good yardage back, Kale Gundy's just trying to buy some time back there. And then he makes the tackle and knocks Hudson out of bounds. There's another look around. Just threw off the back of his foot, and you see Brady was knocked down. Intercepted by Oklahoma, Darnell Walker, his second. When you have a turnover, sometimes you try to go for the quick strike. Little hitch and go. Darnell Walker, number 28, just sits back again and gets his second interception. Tried to go to Eric Mitchell, number four, on the takeoff route. Just like a punt, all the way I look at that. Uh, Coy Detmer gets the air one out, and they're back on the uh, about the 14-yard line, so it's just like a punt. Well, so the last <laughs> two passes that Detmer has thrown have been interceptions, and although it is a punch, now you have to worry a little about his confidence, don't you, Mike? I don't, I don't, not him. Williams, 5, 10, counted off at 13 yards as Hudson will push him out of bounds. You know, the interesting thing about it is Walker's got two interceptions. Hudson has one and actually should have two because he should have gone for a touchdown the one he, he dropped on that uh, second okay. two. Oh, you're right, Ryan. And you mentioned something at the beginning of the broadcast, too. Both these teams are after each other. I mean, there's not any love lost in this football game. There's a lot of talking going back and forth, and uh, energies are running high. John Knutson just limped off the field for the Buffaloes. Reserve outside linebacker. Gandy with a running play. And Ernest Williams will weave his way across the 30. Beekert, number 19, there to make the stop. If you want to have success against Colorado, you have to run the football. You're going to see Greg Beekert, number 19, the linebacker, just shadow the running back, Ernest Williams, and just lets him come to him and makes the tackle. But you have to find a way to run the ball to keep them honest on defense. Right now, he's averaging just under 12 tackles a ball game. 11.8, Greg Beeker. Gundy. Rashid to the 38-yard line. And I'll tell you, from the spotting across the way, he's going to have the first down. Wolford and Dwayne Davis defensively. Well, again, what Colorado did on that play was Show them a blitz, then drop out and play heavy zone coverage. Kale Gundy took the back out of the backfield. Kenyon Rashid, number 33, just a heady play by the veteran quarterback. Clock runs with four minutes and 30 seconds. Left in this opening quarter, no score. Had some pretty good body blows delivered in this one already. Mickey and he will have a first down as he comes out to the 49. Joey Mickey, 6'5, 274. Uh uh. If I'm a strong safety, <laughs> I'd want no part of this guy. Watch Kill Gundy drop out as he sets up for the pass. You see him back up. That gives him a good view of the both defensive sides, the right and left. That's why it's so difficult to trap him. He's able to dump the ball off to the big tight end, Joey Mickey. 
a lot of quarterbacks turn, Ron, to one side or another. And if they're right-hander, they'll turn to their right and set up, and they have a little blind side on the back side. When you back the quarterback out like Oklahoma does, he sees both sides. Well, the Sooners now with back-to-back -back first down. So the Sooners have no points to show for it, but in the early going of this first quarter, mentally they have to say, hey, we can move the football against a very good defense. Well, if it was a fight, they would have won the first couple of rounds here on points, but they're still not in the end zone. Running play, maybe for one. Ernest Williams tripped up by Beaker at the line of scrimmage. Here's an example of what I'm talking about, Mike. That's 16 rushing plays. Oklahoma now 76 yards. Colorado total of 35 yards on seven rushes. No, I agree. They, they've had the better of the first quarter. They've been able to establish a little bit of a running game, which will open their play action passing game. And, of course, Scott Blanton, who you're looking at right there, the place kicker for the Sooners, hoping that he gets an opportunity to help his club out. His longest this year is a 52. Short drop, and he is down. Brian Dyer. When you try to get to the quarterback, you try different fronts sometimes. Colorado, look at all three defensive linemen there trying to cover the center and both guards so that there's only a single block. Watch the offensive line of Oklahoma. That means everybody's singled up. And Brian Diet, number 89, comes free. There's no way you can help the center and the guard with the, with the uh, 46 defense. Nice call by the defensive coach, Mike Hankowitz. Third down, the line to make, Colorado's 41. And they go running play. Williams breaks it to the outside. Good open field stop, and I'll tell you, because of that tackle by Bradford, Mikey's going to be denied the first down by about a yard. Well, I think with a freshman quarterback on the other side of the field, you might go for this. You have to go for this because Coy Detmer started out with a little shaky, and I think this is the time you go for the football, or go for the first down. We'll see what Oklahoma's going to do. They're going to punt. Brad Riddell. They're going to try to put the freshman in the hole unless they fake it here. Figures standing back at his own 10. And he let this one go, and it's off the side of his foot. They're going to spot this one out at the 14-yard line. We'll take a break. Suzu Trooper right on time. has been completely redesigned to include a new suspension system. Honey, bottle. I see it. Making for a smooth, quiet ride on the road as well as off. Of course, these days, what's the difference? Sometimes being a Heil dealer is no fun. Ask Henry. He'll tell you that a Heil furnace is so dependable, once he installs one, he may never see it again. That's why Henry always takes time to visit his old friends, even if all he does is say hello. Hi, it's dependable year after year after year. Win a trip for two to the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl, including five days at the San Diego Hilton Beach and Tennis Resort. You'll see a great game, visit the San Diego Zoo, and drive away in an exciting 1993 Chrysler Concord. To enter, mail your name and address on a 3x5 car to this address, or get an entry form at any thrifty car rental location, or select monthly editions of USA Today. Round trip air transportation provided by Continental Airlines. Leading Heisman hopeful Marshall Falk leads San Diego State's ground attack against Air Force next Saturday on ESPN. Only 150 left in this opening quarter and uh, still no score between the two. The story of this ballgame so far has been turnovers by both clubs. As you look at Mike Hanquist, the 
defense coordinator for the Buffaloes. And take a look at those numbers, Mike. They're 103rd in the nation, so they're not taking advantage of the turnover situation. Rashawn Saleem in the ball game at running back. Gets the handoff, trips over his quarterback's foot, and let's go to Tim Brando. California on the move. Dave Barr, a 13-yard strike to Sean Dawkins. California leads USC by a score of 10 to 6 at games at the half. Ron, you talk about Michael Westbrooks. That John Dawkins may be one of the best receivers in the country for Cal also. Big, tall receiver out, out there for the Cal Bears. Salon goes in motion away from the line of scrimmage. And that last play just got tangled up with his quarterback's feet. Wanted the pass to go to him. They had the zone cleared out because the linebacker had not gotten over to help, but it was underthrown. Boy, Detmer started the game with a lot of success with a short passing game, and then he's thrown a couple interceptions, and there had to be a bust in the pattern on that play because Salam was open and did not look for the football. The Detmers have something different in their blood. Let me tell you something. Yeah. The coach's kid, uh, he's not going to go in the tank. Third and ten for the buck. Pressure for the outside. Pass is thrown complete and tackled, but a flag is down, and Oklahoma is going to be marked for roughing the passer as Detmer took a shot to the head just as the ball was delivered. Around it's interesting because they brought the safety, Drew Christman, number 24. They're trying to show the young guy a lot of footsteps. Roughing the passer. Exactly right. Exactly right on the call, Ron. Drew Christman, number 24, is going to come off the corner at the top of your screen. Coy Detmer sees him, and then you see the hand go to the head, and that's the call. And a costly call. Boy, they had him stop. Oklahoma would have gotten the ball in good field position. Tom. Last week against Texas, it was a roughing the kicker penalty that opened the door. And then an unsportsmanlike call. And you can't have those penalties. Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, is changing up coverages and blitzes on the young freshman quarterback to give him a lot of different looks to try to confuse him. Salam again in the ball game at running back. The freshman from San Diego, 6 feet, 200 pounds. Well, the fans have been anxious to see a lot more of him. And a timeout has been called with 39 seconds left in this opening quarter. And we'll take it with him. About the time it takes you to read this, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee can go from 0 to 60. In about the time it takes you to read this, Grand Cherokee can go from 60 to 0. And in a fraction of the time it takes you to read this, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee could save your life. Maybe it's time for you to test drive one now at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Journey to a world where mystery, beauty, and power collide. Follow warriors into battle. Explore the great temple. Come face to face with the gods. Discover magnificent sights, sounds, and treasures together for the first and only time anywhere. The intrigue of the Aztecs will last forever. Tickets won't. Call for yours today. Having trouble finding Speed Week for the month of October? Catch us every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern. Speed Week, the motorsports coverage you deserve. You've got the need for Speed Week. ESPN brings you a new way to look at sports when you can't get to your TV. The ESPN Radio Network. Watch for us this weekend on the radio. No score with 39 seconds left in this opening quarter. And let's go down to Adrian Carson. What do you have for us, Adrian? Oh, Ron, something I've picked up early here by Coy Detmer. When he comes to the line, I've heard him call a couple of times, 90, check five, 90, check five. And it's pretty impressive for a freshman because what I think he's doing is calling maybe a running and passing play in the huddle and then checking off at the line. Okay, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as they throw the, the swing pass. Salam going to be hit and knocked out at the line of scrimmage. 
scrambling for the football, but the official saying that it was down at the 35. Coates, along with Cedric Jones. Didn't know if we're going to see Jones tonight. He's been having some problems with, uh, with a, a neck sprain. Ron Adrian's exactly right. A lot of times you'll give the quarterback a running play and a passing play, and then you'll go up and you'll give him a design look, like it may be the front that he checks out to the quick pass, or if he sees what he wants in a run, he'll go to the run. to Westbrook, and he breaks the tackle. Westbrook gets nine more yards after he catches the ball. Coates finally makes the stop. And that is the end of the opening quarter. It's a gain of 21 for the Buffaloes. We'll be right back. The national debt. It is a massive storm that is clouding America's future. An ill wind that is destroying jobs. It is a debt so enormous that it will take one-third of the federal income tax collected this year just to pay the interest. $199 billion in interest that could be used to create jobs that will only be lost in the storm. When will it end? when we choose a candidate who understands that deficit spending is an irresponsible act of government, not an uncontrollable act of nature. A proven business leader who will work with the free enterprise system rather than play politics. The candidate is Ross Perot. The issue is the national debt. The choice is yours. Alpha 1 is the Alpha 2. Enemy squad in open. Moving north on foot. Sergeant, here's the latest intelligence report. I'll post it right away, Sergeant. Sir, enemy position is confirmed at top of the Step off. Yeah! Army Reserve, Montgomery GI Bill, skill training and more. Now you can play in the mud without being taken to the cleaners. Presenting the Isuzu Rodeo Lease. See your dealer for details. Right now, Isuzu's making it a little bit easier to maneuver through bad roads, mud, snow, and loan officers. Presenting the Isuzu Rodeo Lease. See your dealer for details. Well, here I am saying goodbye to another Heil Furnace. Heil is so dependable, I may never see this guy again. That's sad news for me, but great news for you. Here's some more good news from Heil. Call for a free brochure and find out about Heil dependability. Learn how heating and cooling systems work from the inside out. Call today and get the dependability of Heil year after year after year. We are back to begin the opening of the second quarter. No score between the Buffaloes and the Sooners. And on first down, it's Salam. And Salam will have a couple. We'll be pushed back to the 45. It's Mike Coach. Well, we've mentioned his name a bunch already. Let's take a look at the Big 8 standings. This is how they are. Kansas with a come-from-behind win today, 2-0. And then Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma at 1-0. And, o and Oklahoma goes to Kansas next week. Campbell coming into the lineup. David, a sophomore out of Oklahoma City. He's playing in that nose guard spot. It's a 46 defense of Oklahoma. Now Colorado will check out. That went drills the pass. Has it complete? And Charles Johnson stretches the football out and I believe is going to have the first down. Tim Brando, let's go to you. The nights are getting longer and longer for Curly Hallman in Tiger Stadium. Pookie Jones of Kentucky scores. On the following possession, Jamie Howard throws an interception. The big blue on the LSU one as we speak in the first quarter. So the Wildcats trying to uh, get a roar of their own down to the Bayou country tonight. Donnell Leomidi, a freshman out of Pongo Pongo, comes into the ballgame. 
but the running play will go with Salam, and he will be stopped at the 34, and let's go back to Adrian Carsten. Well, Ron, slight injury to number 92 nose guard Ricky Wren for Oklahoma, so he'll be back after the next series, but add to that, defensive end Cedric Jones with a neck, defensive end Joe Correa with an ankle, tackle Greg Wilkins with a shoulder, and probably the most significant, Reggie Barnes, their outstanding big eight linebacker with a knee, really puts a lot of the emphasis and, and onus now on the replacements like Trey Tippins to crank up the rest of this defensive unit. Well, that's a great point, Adrian. Oklahoma ready to play on this one. It is the blitz again, picked up by Oklahoma, and he can score. It's Beavers. He will go the distance for six. for the touchdown. We'll take a break. How do you feel? I feel great. You feel terrible. Do you want to make some money? Okay. You feel terrible. The New York Times calls Night in the City a lively, gripping foray into the urban landscape. No can do. What's no can do? What's that, a Chinese appetizer? Not since Raging Bull has there been such a performance. This is it, man. Gritty, intense, powerhouse performances from De Niro and Lang. You want to kill me? I don't give a damn! I'm bringing you home, man. Night and the City, rated R. Exclusive New York engagement now playing. Starts Friday everywhere. One hundred eighty-five horsepower V six. Handling responsive to your touch. The nineteen ninety-three Toyota Camry. Taking the long way again. I'll be home soon. Traffic's light. Few cars actually move you. This is one. This score hasn't changed a bit. Jimmy Harris, welcome back. Seen Coach Green lately? I never thought that man would retire. He used to say, Harris, tackling is like life. Hit it head on. Harris. Coach Green. Coach Harris. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. So, you got any advice? Harris, coaching is like life. Hit it head on. ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Welcome back to Boulder, and this crowd gotten a little quieter during the timeout as Blanton kicks it off. This is Mitchell, who falls down at the one-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a favor you don't want to do for even an unfriend. The freshman now has to come in and look at this situation. Let's take another look at the touchdown play. Earlier in the game, strong safety blitz by Drew Christman, number 24, and he picked up a penalty. This time he comes from the backside, hits Coy Detmer in the back. Aubrey Beavers, number 56, picks up the fumble and gets seven points on the board. Now here's the mistake on the kickoff. Eric Mitchell, number four, he just... He extends himself to catch the football and just knee hits on the one-yard line. So the Colorado football team, for the most part, lining up in the end zone. And Detmer will go straight ahead just to pick up a little room to breathe. That's the first Oklahoma score after three Colorado touchdowns. So we talked about opportunistic or not, which these two clubs this year have been kind of Jekyll and Hyde with. Well, they have to think turnover here again down here. You have them pinned in inside the three-yard line. And this is an offense that has to throw the ball down here. This is not a run offense to pound it out. They have to throw the football down here. Warren hit at the line of scrimmage.
scrimmage. He'll have maybe one. They're going to mark him at the three. Mario Freeman, one of the first men to get there, along with Corey Wilson. Now, as you look at a third down play, two runs. You feel like that they probably Coy Dittmer will look for Westbrook on this play, number 81, his favorite receiver. Now Westbrook, along with Charles Johnson, coming to the bottom part of your screen. Detmer has it to Johnson. Good for 15 yards. Ron, good call and good coverage by Oklahoma. Oklahoma's in great shape here. It's just a two-receiver route. Charles Johnson on the outside is going to curl. Michael Westbrook goes in the flat. Now you see all the defenders from Oklahoma. There's five people in the secondary. Just a good throw by Coy Detmer. Warren goes in motion, so nobody behind Detmer. Pass over the middle. He is caught by the tight end, Faria. Les Steckel told me yesterday at practice, Christian Faria, he tried to make him a wing back, but he said he's the heart and soul of our offense. Great hands and great effort, and you, you just viewed that. The great effort on that reception. Christian Faria is a sophomore from Northridge, California, 6'4", 230. Detmer hit just as he throws it. It is intercepted by Walker, his third of the night, and now a flag has come down late. Back behind the quarterback. This is going to be an interesting call. And I think it's on Aubrey Beavers. I bet it was Chrisman, I beg your pardon, 24, who made the pickoff rather than Walker. Chrisman's everywhere here tonight. Two strong safety blitzes. The foul was a dead ball foul. Roughing the passer. It's Oklahoma's ball. 15-yard penalty and first down. Let's look at the hit on Coy Detmer by Aubrey Beavers. Here's a little fake. Right side of your screen, number 56, just passes through the block of the running back and then a little extra mud wrestling there at the uh, at the bottom. Here's the interception by Drew Christman, and they're saying now the penalty was a dead ball foul, so Oklahoma gets the football 15 yards back. Well, we talked about uh, we talked about Christman off the top of the telecast tonight and the fact that uh, he was the big hitter on that defense. He also was drafted in baseball, so a big hitter uh, in a couple of sports, but he's had the 15-yard penalty on the blitz, then the hit off the blitz and the fumble recovery for a touchdown for Oklahoma and now an interception the fourth Colorado turnover Mike I would love to not to conjecture here but the penalty being taken from the spot of the foul and back to the 42 I would love to know how they came up with a post play foul though I think it was after the interception what they're viewing it the ball is already intercepted when he started twisting him on the ground the problem with that penalty is normally post play is oh, okay, so possession change. Right. You're right. You're exactly right. But the first and 25 is what hurts Oklahoma. Gundy going to go on top. And it is complete to Corey Warren. Over the shoulder catch at the 16 yard line. And a flag is down back at the 45 yard line. Holding Oklahoma. Offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Let's take another look at the roughing the passer call. See Aubrey Beavers get inside, now make the tackle. Now you see the official right there has not thrown the flag yet. There it comes now. Maybe he said something to him, Ron. That's the only thing I can figure there when the flag came out. A lot of talking been going on on the field. So the situation in this one, 10 more yards stepped off against the Sooners. 7 0. Though you leads with 11.05 left to play opening quarter. Brewer hit in the backfield. 
Leonard Renfro will knock him down for another loss, and the Sooners are going to have about a second down and 40. Ron, they keep going back any further. They're going to have to go to Denver for the first down because they just keep going back. Here's the draw play. Leonard Renfro, number 99, gets so much penetration. Makes the play in the backfield. at the 36 and a half yard line. Sam Rogers this time. Ron, interesting about this football team, Colorado. They're in trouble and they're struggling a little bit on offense. And what do you ask to turn up the heat in the ball game? Your defense. They've got a great defensive football team. And now it's third down, 47 yards to go. But the defense of Colorado is making a statement right now. But they've had some help with the penalties. I'll tell you, if you own the amount of land here in Colorado that Oklahoma needs for the first down, you could get a quarter of a million. View lot or not. Draw play. Rashid will take it out to the 48-yard line as Lindsey will finally put a stop on him, and the Sooners will punt the football. Now, the good news for Sooner fans is they've got nothing off the turnover, but they're kicking with a win. They stand to pin Colorado very deep again. Well, I, th I think that Colorado has to move Coy Detmer around in the pocket a little bit more, roll him out a little bit to try to get him away from the rush of the Oklahoma defense. Adele's kick, good heaven. This one's going to be, this is what I thought, out of the back of the end zone. That wind is still gusting pretty good. 52 yards is what he will be credited with. On the kick, we'll be right back. Nineteen ninety-three Toyota four by four. Nothing else comes close. One of these engines was filled with Castro Syntec, a new synthetic oil. The rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see Syntec's unique molecular structure bonds to engine parts. That test show it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. Just a hoot and a holler from Nashville's Grand Old Opry is another place that's home to musicians from all over the world. It's Groon Guitars, where they sell rare and vintage instruments to everyone from Johnny Cash to Motley Crue. So if you go, remember, bring your pick and your Visa card. Because at Groon, you can take your licks on a 1939 Martin, but you can't take it home with American Express. Yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Leading Heisman hopeful Marshall Falk leads San Diego State's ground attack against Air Force next Saturday on ESPN. In what has been a very rapidly moving football game, 7 0. Sooners on top. Mike, following that last turnover in the 15 yard penalty, five Oklahoma plays went for losses totaling 37 yards. So minus 37, add the 15 for the penalty. They went 52 yards the wrong direction. And you made the point during the timeout. Boy, they had a great opportunity to pick up points after that turnover. Lamont Warren, straight ahead. And Tim Brando, what do you have for us? The LSU Tigers in desperate need of getting their offense on track. Look on the play action fake Jamie Howard to Wesley Jacob, who, by the way, has caught a pass in the past 15 consecutive games. Tigers down three. That game has moved to the second quarter. Uh, they're getting that loosened up uh, on the basketball court. Those two, uh, I imagine, will be pretty heated as well, Tim. <laughs> that you know they will. You know, I wish the NCAA hadn't made that rule. We, they should be practicing basketball right now. The 15th has gone by, and you haven't heard a thump yet, have you? No. 
There are a few bumps out here tonight. <laughs> Warren to the short side of the field and stop just short of the 30-yard line. It's Darius Johnson. He's a freshman out of Terrell, Texas. Instead of basketballs bouncing, they've been bodies. Well, I'll tell you. These two teams are after each other tonight. It started from the get-go. The flip of the coin. All of a sudden, the two teams came down the tunnel. Ralphie made her appearance, made the full lap. And uh, then all of a sudden we looked in the, in, in the middle of the field. We're saying, this is a penalty, guys. You can't do this. And they almost went after each other. Better than short. Little counterplay. Warren, and he will not have it. Coach number 41, the first man to get there and make the hit, and then a lot of help from his friend. Mario Freeman as well. You have to credit the Oklahoma defense. They're playing without Reggie Barnes tonight, who may be the best player on defense. So when you lose your star player, everybody has to turn it up a notch. Look at the penetration they get. Mario Freeman, number 44, on the tackle. Mitch Berger averaging 46.7 yards per kick. Line drive into the win. And this is Brewer. Back to the 21. comes down at the 32-yard line. 50-yard kick into the win, and he gets 10 on the return. Well, tonight's Toyota Leadership Award winners this week are from University of Oklahoma fullback Kenyon Rashid. He carries a 3.06 grade point average in communications and speaks to youth groups in the Oklahoma City area. And from Colorado, it's linebacker Greg Beaker. He's a graduate student. He got his degree in marketing with a 3.0 average and in the community, he speaks to youth groups and is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Toyota, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. And our congratulations go to both of them. So the 15-yard penalty stepped off against Oklahoma, and they will scrimmage from their own 18-yard line. Thus far, rushing yardage, Oklahoma 20 yards out of 100 in total offense, Colorado 25 out of 107 in total offense. Rashid, as a flag comes down, and that was thrown by the umpire, and he's the man responsible for watching the offensive and defensive lines. Renfro is there to make the stop, and it's going to be offensive holding against the Sooners. Well, if you're on the Oklahoma sideline right now, you just got to get your players together, gather them together, because penalties are killing you in this football game. It's tough enough getting 10 yards on four downs uh, when you have to start adding 15 more and then 15 more onto that. Clarence James with the headset on, uh, closest to the camera. Wide receiver coach who Gary Gibbs brought in, and I think, is he not the first wide receiver coach that Oklahoma's ever had in a time situation? Since Gary Gibbs, first time wide receiver because now they throw the ball to him a little bit more, so uh, they, they want somebody out there watching him all the time, but uh, he's a very, very solid football coach. Clarence, a good fellow, have known him for a long time, and he is a young man, young son named John, who may be better than all of us in this industry by the time he uh, graduates from college. He wants to be a TV announcer, and he's going to be a good one. Ernest Williams straight ahead, and not much doing there. Leonard Renfro again, and now here come markers all over the place. And now a lot of finger pointing for who this call is going to go against. This has been a problem from the start of the game. The officials have tried to get the talking and the squaring off under control. Dead ball. Personal foul, defense, automatic first down. Take a look at uh, Dion Figures. He's working against Hall, number one. There's the contact. Keep squaring off each other. There's the late elbow. I think a pretty good call. So 15 yards now marked off against the Buffaloes, and that carries with it an automatic first down. Clarence James talking to Hall and probably trying to calm him down a little bit, saying, we don't need, you, what you did was right. We don't need to get in a fracas. Let them get the penalty. Now 
Gundy to Rashid to the 35 and still on his feet across the 40 to the 41. Good heavens, what a good second effort. Bradford and Brian Diet finally brought him down. Ron, when I had the Texas Tech-Oklahoma game, I just was amazed at Kenyon Rashid, number 33. He has a great eye fullback, but has great hands. has the hands of a basketball player. Greg Brown, the defensive backfield coach of Colorado, said he's like a Coke machine rolling down the hill. <laughs> well, you're playing against a football team tonight that is a very sure tackling football team in Colorado, and you can see the tacklers just spilling off of him. Gundy rolls that pocket. Well, Hall was the closest man to it. And let's go back to Tim Brando. Ron and Mike, USC, I think you would agree, is one of the better teams that does not have, well, has several blemishes on its record. But Rob Johnson here finds Bradford Banta, USC's first lead in this game against Cal. It comes early in the third. Good ball game. You saw Cal against uh, against Kansas a couple of three Thursday nights ago. And as you had mentioned, Cal is a very good football team. The Pac-10 conference uh, just could be the best conference in the country this year so far. I think with the SEC and the ACC, I think you're looking at the three best, in my opinion. Seven to nothing, our score. 536 left until halftime. And the situation for the Oklahoma Sooners is a second down and 10 for their own 41-yard line. Ron, I might add, this is not a bad one we're at tonight either. <laughs> no. There's some guys at Lincoln that uh, are always in the middle of the fray. And some other clubs that have had some problems in recent years that have now shown great improvement. There's the 46 defense, and Gundy will check out. Quick pass, and it is picked off by Beaker. backfield coach has got Greg Beaker number 19 he's going to be on inside they're doubling up the outside receiver Keanu Gundy is checking off see number 19 he's running right to the inside that was a pre-planned defensive call for Greg Beaker to double on the inside that was a defensive call that resulted in that interception they knew what the checkoff was going to be of Kel Gundy he was going to try to throw the short slant Great call on a defense of Colorado. And now, Mike, Colorado wants a timeout. So we'll take it with them. 528 until halftime, and the Buffaloes threatening to tie this one. We have a great relationship, and I, I love my husband. So why are you here? What time did you get in? Oh. I think you know my wife. I can't do this. That's not what Michelle wants. I know what Michelle wants. I'm giving it to her. Yes. You find what you're looking for? You wanted me to see you with her, didn't you? You'd like to save substantial equity when you sell your home? Sure, but how? Help You Sell. Help You Sell has a nationally proven way to market your home. Help You Sell helps you save. You just show your home. We do all the rest, from advertising to contract writing through closing. And at Help You Sell, there are no advance or upfront fees. Help You Sell knows the South Metro Marketplace. Help You Sell, the better way to sell your home. The Iowa caucus was held in North Dakota, Jenny's Cafe. The California primary was held on a farm in New Jersey. And Bud Monroe hosted the Democratic National Convention at his barbershop. Wherever you live, your local cable company is bringing the most extensive election coverage in history to your town. So you'll be better prepared to vote for the next president, who will be sworn in January 20th at the home of Charles and Nellie Sparks. Maybe I ought to make one of them cream pies, Nellie. So we're back, our situation, Greg Bickert with the interception return inside the 10-yard line, and that's Lamont Warren, the lone setback behind Coy Detmer. Ball is fumbled, it's on the ground. Colorado 
has recovered the fumble. And of course, Ryan Stoltenberg is a redshirt freshman, the center, and Coy Detmer is a true freshman. So, Mike, as we talked about last week in the Missouri game, when these two combine, they have to be one of the youngest tandems in the country. Oh, there's no doubt, Ron. That, and I look, oh, there's no doubt. What you, I think what Colorado has to look to do here is roll Coy Detmer out to the right and look for the tight ends. Bring the tight ends across. Use a little crossing route. Try to get him on the corner. Warren to the outside, at the two, at the one, and Lamont Warren stopped just outside the one. Drew Chrisman making the stop for Oklahoma. Colorado with a two tight end offense. It's going to run the tailback counter play. Look at the two linemen pulling in front. Lamont Warren working for the extra yards. Drew Chrisman, 24, makes the tackle. Look at Lamont Warren just driving hard to try to get to the goal line. James Hill comes into the lineup. He will be at fullback, number 33, with Lamont Warren in the backfield. Fumble the snap from center. Oklahoma has recovered. Aubrey Beavers. turnovers in the first half. That is unbelievable. From behind the quarterback, Coy Detmer. See the snap? It looked like it never got to his hands. Just a, a bad snap. Control between the center and quarterback. You know what? And for people sitting at home, they think that that has to be one of the easiest things to take place. And we've proven here tonight it certainly is not. Rashid straight ahead. we go for maybe a half yard, and that's about it. In fact, tonight Colorado has put some adventure in that uh, center snap to the quarterback. Well, youthful inexperience at both the center position and the quarterback position. You have an offense where you're throwing the football. Bill McCartney. Talking to both freshmen, all, he, all Bill's trying to do is just settle down a little bit because it's a long football game. 354 still to go in the first half. So the two freshmen with their heads together, you can see Coach McCartney patting the pad, the palm of his hand, as Gundy will turn around and he is going to call a timeout. The 25 second clock was down to two. Timeout on the field. 342 until the halftime. Oklahoma, seven to nothing. You can see it in their eyes. They're pushing to raise the benchmark of quality. And after three million miles of testing, the people of Exxon know Phase 4 gasoline offers the highest level of engine cleaning. All for one reason. For proven high performance, you can rely on. Let the tiger set you free. This is Reader's Digest. This is Conica. Why you turn to Reader's Digest. Why Reader's Digest turns to Conica. So if you know this company, you should know this company. Because Conica contributes to Reader's Digest. This is Federal Express. This is Conica. Why you use Federal Express. Why Federal Express uses Conica. So if you know this company, you should know this company. Because Conica delivers for Federal Express. We're back with 3.42 left until the halftime, but let's go down to Adrian Carson. Adrian? Ron, Ron, I was right in front of Coy Detmer as he ran off the field. The remedy to that problem is real simple. He just doesn't have his hands up underneath the butt up into the crotch of that center far enough because he's so anxious to pull out of it. 
Well, we'll take a closer look at it the next time Colorado goes on offense. Joel Brewer in the vicinity of the 10-yard line, and now it's third down for the Oklahoma Sooners. And just taking a look at the clock, Colorado does have one timeout left. And you wonder, Mike, if they might use it after this play to stop the clock, should they stop the Sooners, because they stand to get decent field position. I don't think they will, Ron, because I think they'll want to use it with the freshman quarterback. I think I'd prefer to save it if I hold him here to get the ball to have a, a timeout with Floyd Detmer. Chad Brown stepped right up into the hole and put an end to that play almost before it was started. Holding against Oklahoma. Chad Brown, number 34, is going to work inside number 86, Ricky Brady. Don't know if that's the whole call, but you see Chad Brown trying to rip the ball out of the running back's hands. Penalty declined, fourth down. Colorado wants the football. And as you watch Brown go off the field, along with Marcella Selder, a defensive unit for Colorado has had to work overtime tonight. Buffaloes with 10 men at the line of scrimmage. Will they come after him? Nope, they got the return on. Figures at the 50. <laughs> 40 yards and the kick, 16 on the return. And let's go to Tim Brando. Tell me what do you have for us. Ron, California handed SC its worst loss in the Larry Smith era last year, 52 to 30. Here, a 20-yard pass from Dave Barr to Sean Dawkins gives the Golden Bears a four-point lead over the Trojans early in the third. Sean Dawkins strikes again. Denver with a play action, and they roll the pocket, just as Mike suggested. For real, the tight end inside the 20. 17 yards on the pass play. The play action pass play for Corey Detmer gives him a chance to get outside the rush. Here's the fake, which holds the defensive rush. Now he sets up, there's the throw. It's a good route, nice throw by Corey Detmer. Warren get hit by Mike Coates in the middle of the line. And now let's see what the marker's all about. Offside, Oklahoma. Another critical penalty for Gary Gibbs and the Oklahoma Sooners. Coates had just turned Lamont Warren upside down. There's not going to be any gain in the play, but now... It is, as you see, seven penalties for 70 yards. Now it's going to be a first down and five. Ron, if Colorado's to get in the end zone here for seven points, they're, they're going to have to do it against the blitz of Oklahoma, which leaves a guy like Wes Brooks and Charles Johnson outside one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if they give Coy Detmer time, he has two excellent receivers to go to. at the five and then push back. That is enough for the Colorado first down. Clock shows 145 until the halftime. Buffaloes trying to tie this one up. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside, Michael Westbrook. Now, I still think the bootleg again down here. The bootleg pass where he rolls to the right, bring the tight end to cross, is something that he will be comfortable with down here. Well, he's got two tight ends, Faria and Embry, 85 and 86. Warren goes inside the five. They'll spot him at the two, and it's Trey Tippins who gets a hand on him to trip him up. 
When you run that play, Ron, now the coach upstairs needs to be looking to the field to see if the bootleg's open. So now we'll see if the coach upstairs feels like the bootleg's there. Mike inside the 10. This is twice that Colorado has run that when Oklahoma has come up tight, bringing everybody to the line of scrimmage. Pass incomplete, and we have a flag thrown behind the quarterback, thrown this time by the referee. And it's going to be holding against the Colorado Buffaloes. In case you just joined us, the reason for the look on this man's face right here, if you see frustration, five first-half turnovers. His team has already been inside the five-yard line. They fumbled the snap from center, and Oklahoma recovered it. They're still in great shape, Colorado, to throw the ball in the end zone, and they still have one timeout, but they have to handle the blitz. They have not been able to handle the blitz down here. So here's the situation. They have one timeout left, as Mike said. 52 seconds left. They're down 7 to nothing. Ron, keep your eye on number 24, Drew Christman. They may bring him from the outside again. It's knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and it's Trey Tippins, the senior from Snyder, Texas. They brought the strong safety again. Drew Christman, number 24, left your screen. They just have too many people to block on the blitz. Top of your screen, you're going to see 24 and 88 come in. 88 comes free. No one to block him. Deflects the pass. Detmer, 12 of 18, 108 yards, and three interceptions. From the outside, pass from the end zone, overthrown and incomplete. It will be fourth down Colorado. And Mike, just as you suggested, they brought the safety again. That's something that Colorado's going to have to talk about at halftime, Bill McCartney's team, because they haven't handled the strong safety blitz, Drew Christman. And Tom Hayes on the other side, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma, he can't sit back. He's just going to keep pressuring the freshman quarterback. This is a 30-yard attempt by Pat Lotto. 7 of 10 this year. He missed it. To the right and no good. Well, be sure to get next Saturday's college football viewing off to the right start with College Game Day. It's all the previews and features that you could ask for starting at 11.30 Eastern Time. Then it's Big Ten action as the surprising Wisconsin Badgers travel to Bloomington, Indiana to take on running back Brett Law and the Indiana Hoosiers. Then at 7 o'clock, it's the College Football School Board. That'll get you up to date on all the day's action. And at 7.30, Heisman hopeful Marshall Falk continues his chase as he takes on Air Force. All of that next Saturday, right here on ESPN. Gundy will go down on one knee with 35 seconds left until halftime. Now it's important for both teams as they go into the locker room to make adjustments in the second half. It's very clear the game plan of both defensive teams to pressure the quarterback. Both teams will make their adjustments at halftime. We'll see when we come out the second half who has the most success. Well, Mike, you know, the defensive stars in this ballgame on both sides of the football have been many. It's some offensive folks are going to have to look for stardom in the second half, particularly for Colorado. If they're going to maintain this Big 8 conference winning streak. And you see the defense of Oklahoma on the near sideline. Hands together. It is halftime. So let's take a break. Oklahoma, by way of a fumble pickup and return by Audrey Beavers, 7-0. Discovery Channel. It's your world. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, oh, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. The Lone Ranger.
was that masked man who stopped the horses? I don't know. But he give me this. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going and... The 1993 Toyota Tercel not only comes with a standard driver's side airbag, it's also Toyota's lowest price four-door sedan. Why four doors? Because you never know when you might need the extra room. Don't even think about it. What? We welcome you to our halftime studios. Uh, we hope that it's prettier than Colorado's offense in the first half. I am Tim Brando, along with the coach Lee Corso and the player Craig James. A lot of uh, night action that we need to update you on. Number one, and holding, maybe. The quack attack has stopped them in Eugene the last two times Washington has ventured into Oregon. Things rough early for Mark Brudel, sandwiched here by Jeff Cummins and Terrell Edwards. It would get revenge, though. Here he calls his own number. Keeps it, scores it, 7 nothing Husky. After a block punt on the Huskies deep in duck territory, Brunel showing mobility, rolls to his left, will hit Jason Shelley, who just keeps his feet in, 31 yards to strike, 14-0 Huskies. Rich Brooks obviously disgusted, 17-0 Huskies at the half. Oregon has not played that poorly defensively. They've just given the ball back a great deal on the offensive side of the ball. California taking on Southern Cal. It's been a long drought at the L.A. Coliseum for them. Dave Barr here finds Sean Dawkins, 10-0 Cal. USC had some problems offensively. Estrus Creighton steps on his own fullback, Mike Mooney, here. Third quarter, it's 10-6 Cal. Rob Johnson on the play action finds the tight end, Bradford Panta, 13-10 SC. Cal responds, though. Barr will find Dawkins again, 20 yards to strike, 17-13 Cal. Golden Bears, who played so well at Kansas, you'll recall, on a Thursday night, doing the same at the L.A. Coliseum. It is 17-13. We're going to keep it in the Pac-10 now. Arizona clipped Stanford's wings. They were a pretty good favorite today. 21-6 for the Mighty Dog. Washington State and UCLA. And the Cougars obviously playing well today. 30-17. Drew Bledsoe only 9-25, of 25, though, for 108 yards in the ballgame. Well, if you're coaching a team that's winless, perhaps your team should turn on you and ask you to resign. Chuck Stobart went through that at Memphis State. Sparky Woods went through it this week at South Carolina. We love you, Sparky. We don't need a Ford to get you out of the woods. First quarter, Gamecock freshman Steve Tannehill getting the start, connecting with Austin Penny. It's, 10, it's a 6 nothing South Carolina lead. Tannehill excited. Tannehill, who was highly recruited out of Altoona, Pennsylvania, will get away here and find Don Chaney. And like the basketball player Don Chaney, he outjumps Frankie Luster, goes in for the touchdown. Sparky Woods celebrates South Carolina's first win in 10 games, its first SEC win. Maybe he'll hold on to some more hair now. 21-6, South Carolina comes away with a victory. And Alabama did it on the third Saturday of October for the seventh consecutive time against Johnny Majors. 17-10, the big story in this game, over 300 yards on the ground for Alabama, only 78 for Tennessee. And I think you'll agree, Craig, this defense for Alabama is for real. And what's the major factor in your mind where this Alabama defense is concerned? It has to be team speed. Gene Stallings knows he has it. He depends on it. Watch here in this ball flight. As you see, Derek Oden, number 56, will come from the left side. He'll chase down Tennessee quarterback Jerry Colquitt. Team speed second to none, getting to the ball carrier. One of five tied sacks on the day. Yeah, they take no back seat, do they, to Miami they sure or don't. to Florida State. All right, let's talk about Florida State, though. Sean Jones to Jason McGill, 28 yards, 18-7 Jackets, who missed the two-point conversion. Knowles would rally, fourth and five, 156 to play. Look at this, Lee. Oh, that's a great call. The reason why this play works is Florida State changed and kept the backs in to block the blitz, giving Charlie Ward time to throw. Great call. Now, it's a one-on-one -on -one cut, but this is controversial. Kez McCorvey did break the plane before the fumble. Charlie Ward does it again, 29-24. to 24. Florida State now 6-1, but perfect in the ACC. And Charlie Ward, when you stop and think about it, it was a Jekyll and Hyde act for Charlie in the first and second half. We've seen that before. I don't know which side's Jekyll and which one's Hyde, <laughs> however that works. But here's what I would do if I were Bobby Bowden. I would consider the no-huddle offense and go into the line of scrimmage because that's when Charlie Ward truly is effective. Why? 
because he doesn't have to think that much. He lets that tremendous athletic ability take over, and he, every time he goes to that hurry-up offense, ooh, they go down the field. You know, we've been covering a statistic, I think, that is very important. You've had an update on Alabama's defense. It's a staggering stat. Right. Their first team, the first team Alabama defense, has had the opponent snap the ball against them 230 times this year and allowed one touchdown and two field goals. That's magnificent. That's the best I've ever heard of. That's why Alabama has a shot at the national championship. Uh, we've been doubters before, but no longer, right? No more. Not yeah. me. Yeah, Alabama and Miami, there could be some talk now about that game for the coalition on New Year's Day. The Delta Fawcett halftime report will continue. We'll have the fantastic finishes on this third Saturday of October. And as we go to break, take a look at Princeton. Keith Elias was held in check today. Imagine this. Three rushes, only two yards for him today against Holy Cross. Good morning, America! Good morning! Good morning! Every morning all across America, over 50 million people come to life with Delta faucets. Live, love, laugh, and be happy. Good morning, good morning, Delta, good the morning. way water is good brought morning. to life. <laughs> A refreshingly different beer has come together. Why is that such a bright idea? Why ask why? Try Bud Drive. It drinks easy like a light with real draft taste. No wonder. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Yeah. It's attracting such a crowd. Can't someone pick up my phone? Terry here. But that Terry, that package you promised, never got here. This isn't Mr. Terry. This is his secretary. Please hold. Federal Express, I need to check on a package fast. Keep holding, please. I hear Mr. Terry down the hall. Only Federal Express can confirm delivery in seconds. Other companies can take days. That package was delivered at 9.07, signed for by Mr. Hanson. Oh, sir. That's okay. Federal Express, our most important package is yours. This halftime report is presented by Delta Fawcett Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. They are underway in game one at the launching pad in Atlanta. Tom Glavin against Jack Morris. They are scoreless as they move in to the second inning of play. We welcome you back. The Delta Fawcett Halftime Report rolls on, and boy, do we have some games to tell you about. The games that are currently in progress, as well as some fantastic finishes. Mississippi taking on Arkansas. It is now 10-3 at the half. Marvin Courtney, a one-yard touchdown run. LSU has come back from 10 down and have tied the game at 10. Jamie Howard with a 33-yard strike to Wesley Jacob in that one. Minnesota taking on Michigan State in the Big Ten. This ball game has now moved into the fourth. The Spartans trying to do it on the road, but under the doll, Minnesota up by five. Bowling Green as we move to the, the MAC uh, against the Rockets of Toledo. It is now a 7-3 ball game at halftime. Now, those fantastic finishes we were talking about. You know, we had Bobby Bowden on today. We didn't see a punt rooski. We didn't see a fumble rooski. But we had one today as Kansas was launching a comeback. But Iowa State started it all. And, Lee, you love fumble rooskies. Watch Iowa State center Scott Armbus. Instead of snapping the ball, he'll put the ball on the ground. Right guard Jim Thompson picks it up. This play always works because no one expects a big guy with a number 52 to run it in for a touchdown. Now, that was part of a 40-0 Iowa State run in the second and third quarters. It was 47-27, but then Kansas comes back. Chip Hillary finds Matt Gay, who spins in for the touchdown. They missed the extra point. It was 47-42. 21 seconds later, Bob Utter hits by Gerald McBurrows. He fumbles. Larry Field scoop, scoops it up, goes 37 yards. A two-point conversion by the Jayhawks makes it. 50 to 47. That was a 29 to nothing run in the third and fourth quarters of that ball game. Hillary was 16 of 27. Biggest comeback in school history prior to that time. You see what it was. A remarkable game for the Jayhawks. NC State and Virginia Tech. Vinicic with no time remaining. Boots through the tying field goal, but an unimpressive tie in non-conference play for Dick Sheridan's club. 
we can we continue with our fantastic finishes by showing you this. Marvin Graves, late in the fourth, trailing 17-13, rolls right, knocked out of bounds by Tommy Orr right there. Graves fires the ball off Orr's head, fight erupts. Now, there were four players ejected, three of them Mountaineers, but not Graves. Now, the drive continues, fourth and nine, and it's Chris Gedney, who's an outstanding tight end. Mountaineers think they've won it, but you know what? Dead ball foul. They got to go again, Greg. And, and Graves shouldn't have been on this play. He should have been ejected in the ball game. Instead, his ability allows him and his team to score the touchdown to get me. So Syracuse goes on to win it by a final score of 2017. Paul Pasqualoni just escapes again. Graves was 16 of 26 for 245 yards. Boston College and Penn State, can you believe it? BC has to hold on. 25-point lead they almost lost today at Penn State. They were up at 1.35 to 10. Glenn Foley had a big day. Now for some of the blowouts that we had today that were expected. Miami over TCU, 45 to 10. Four receptions for Lamar Thomas on the day. Michigan blows out Indiana, 31 to 3, the final score there. Texas A&M and Rice, 35 to 9. Trevor Cobb had only 84 yards rushing today against the Aggie defense. North Carolina beats up on a Virginia team that was playing without Terry Kirby. Their second straight loss, 27 to 7, the final score. Clemson and Duke. Coach Kenny Hatfield is back on track at Howard's Rock. 21-6, they beat Duke today. Over in the Southeastern Conference, Vanderbilt gave Georgia a tussle. This game was tied at the intermission at 20, but Garrison Hurst truly the difference. The Heisman candidate sneaking up on Marshall Falk. 246 yards for him. Florida beats Auburn today, 24-9, and their record moves up to 3-2 overall. All right. Let's talk a little bit now, Lee, about the situation in the Rose Bowl. Let's preview that setup right now. Well, first of all, Michigan is the best offensive team in, in college football I've seen this year. They got the best balance. And mark it down. Arizona will beat Washington November the 7th in, in Tucson and mess up the whole Rose Bowl situation. You know, now I know the Boston market is not Greenville, North Carolina, where East Carolina was, but you can make a case that B.C. is becoming the East Carolina this year. Well, in my opinion, Boston College has emerged as one of the top 10 to 15 teams in the entire country, particularly after their performance today at Penn State. They've got Glenn Foley at quarterback that continues to get better every week. The key man in an offense and a football team, the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And they've got that dynamite running game. And remember this, while West Virginia and uh, Syracuse have a shot at Miami, Boston College doesn't have to worry with them. So that will be helpful to them if they want to remain unbeaten in one time. Stay with us. The Delta Fawcett Halftime Report rolls on. In Boulder, it's been a question of big hits and big turnovers. The hits for the Sooners. The turnovers for the Buffaloes. Coy Detmer. Welcome to the starting role as a young guy. See you again. We have a great relationship, and I, I love my husband. So why are you here? What time do you get in? Oh. I think you know my wife. I can't do this. Leave him. That's not what Michelle wants. I know what Michelle wants. I'm giving it to her. Yes. Did you find what you're looking for? You wanted me to see you with her, didn't you? you like to save substantial equity when you sell your home? Sure, but how? Help You Sell. Help You Sell has a nationally proven way to market your home. Help You Sell helps you save. You just show your home. We do all the rest, from advertising to contract writing through closing. And at Help You Sell, there are no advance or upfront fees. Help You Sell knows the South Metro Marketplace. Help You Sell, the better way to sell your home. In our program, we look at the funny side of being a coach, but in real life, a college football coach has a serious responsibility. Beyond the pressures of winning and losing games, the coach has a primary commitment to his players. The coach realizes that while you got to be ready for the next game, the real winners are those who graduate from college prepared for another field. America wins with college football.
The Delta Falls at halftime report rolls on. Over to the Big Ten, where Wisconsin gets four field goals from Rich Thompson, wins the game by a score of 19-16. Iowa, Jim Hartleib, 18 of 2,470 yards, 24-14 over the Illini. Rutgers gets a week off, taking on the Black Knights of the Hudson and winning big. Wake Forest beats Maryland. Mark Duffner now has lost more games in his first seven at Maryland than in six years at Holy Cross. Baylor beats Houston 29 to 23. David Mims, 10 rushes for 84 yards for Baylor. Utah State and Kansas State won by Utah State 28-16, snapping a 20-game non-conference losing streak. Colorado State, a much-needed win for Earl Bruce against the Air Force Academy, 32-28 in that one. Akron, the Zips get it done for Ball State, 22-14. Odell Robbins a couple of touchdown runs in that ball game. Eastern Michigan has had its share of problems, losing their eighth straight. This time, Western Michigan, the benefactor, 20-19. Pacific and New Mexico State, 49-17. Ryan Benjamin, 23 rushes for 220 yards. More to come in our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. He said he was never drafted. Then he admitted he was drafted. Then he said he forgot being drafted. He said he was never deferred from the draft. Then he said he was. He said he never received special treatment, but he did receive special treatment. The question then was avoiding the draft. Now, for Bill Clinton, it's a question of avoiding the truth. He's waiting, he's waiting about a car length and a half behind Al Jr. Al Jr. now links it out. He's trying to hold him off. Goodyear low, Jagger high. They go to four, Bob Lilly. Allison Jr. has the lead. One more turn to go. Here they come. Coming to the finish line. Bob Jenkins, who's going to win it? The checkered flag is out. Goodyear makes a move. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. Perhaps the closest finish of the history of the Indianapolis 500. We need to develop a game plan. That's easy. Let's watch college football. Let's go to a game. There's nothing more exciting than college football. Great bands, tailgating, and the spirit connected with the college game is a great combination. And don't forget the game itself. There are a number of good teams this year. And you're right. Going to a game can be fun. The coach invites you to enjoy college football. Yeah. America wins with college football. Couple of scores that we can update for you. California now up 24 to 13 in that ball game. And remember, as you look at Cal with that lead, Washington continues to roll against Oregon 24 to 3. And the Huskies have not given up a point in the fourth quarter all year. That'll do it. See you again. We have a great relationship, and I I love my husband. So why are you here? What time did you get in? You know my wife. I can't do this. Leave him. That's not what Michelle wants. I know what Michelle wants. I'm giving it to her. Yes. Did you find what you're looking for? You wanted me to see you with her, didn't you? You'd like to save substantial equity when you sell your home? Sure, but how? Help you sell. Help You Sell has a nationally proven way to market your home. Help You Sell helps you save. You just show your home. We do all the rest, from advertising to contract writing through closing. And at Help You Sell, there are no advance or upfront fees. Help You Sell knows the South Metro Marketplace. Help You Sell, the better way to sell your home. Welcome back to Boulder. 7 to nothing, our halftime score. Uh, but there are so many numbers to talk about in the first half. First of all, confidence in a freshman quarterback. I know that Bill McCartney has a world of confidence in Coy Detmer, but he did not figure on five first-half turnovers. Well, he didn't play very well in the first half. You're going to see this pass where he never sees the strong safety coming, Drew Chrisman. There's the bullseye on Coy's back. Chrisman comes from the backside, will hit him in the back, Cause the fumble, Aubrey Beavers picks it up, and there's the seven points that Oklahoma puts on the board. Now on the other side, Kiel Gundy, the veteran quarterback, Colorado baits him into this coverage. Now he has one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He checks off to the quick slant, but Greg Beekert on the snap of the ball knows that he's gonna go to the quick slant, and he has the receiver double. 
Now, Dion Figures is on the outside. He's on the inside. Kale Gundy threw it exactly where Greg Beaker thought he'd throw it, picks it off. But Oklahoma held them. Colorado did not get in the end zone. You look at Scott Blanton, who is about to kick it off to open this third quarter with his Sooners on top, 7-0. The man that he is kicking to is a sophomore from Los Alamitos, California. Number four, Eric Mitchell. Mitchell will be driven five yards into the end zone. Well, here are the first half numbers and for the quarterbacks, first of all. Well, I think what Colorado has to do with Coy Detmer is take the pressure off of him a little bit. Get the ball to the running back, Lamont Warren, and try to establish a running game to take the pressure off him so he doesn't feel like he has to win this football game. And the other numbers, and the one that jumps out at me that we both talk about, very bottom left, seven penalties, 70 yards against the Sooners. It's killed Oklahoma. If they didn't have those penalties, right now they'd be up by a couple touchdowns. Detmer in the short drop. Pass is complete to Johnson, and he will have the Colorado first down. Mike, you know something that Johnson has a habit of doing after watching him two weeks in a row? He tries to stretch the ball out every time as he's going down. It's going to cost him before it's all said and done. It's too dangerous to do. It could, and, some, and most of the time, he really doesn't get the spot of moving the ball ahead. Lamont, a sophomore from Inglewood, California. Had a shoulder injured last week against Missouri and only saw him early in the first half. Ball is blocked and right back to Detmer. That's a legal play, and he'll take it back to the line of scrimmage. The Colorado offensive line at last year at this time was running the option. And, and pass protection has been a little difficult for them. Boy, Denver with a heads-up play of catching the football. It was Aubrey Beavers who blocked it. So he now has a fumble recovery, an interception, a 56-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown, and a blocked pass. Denver pass to his tight end, Faria, across the 35 to the 36. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, I eavesdropped on the Colorado speech at halftime. Really surprised at no ranting and raving. Coach McCartney said, look, you're not denting, or they are rather not denting our defense. I have confidence in our offense. Look, this is our offense of the future. You guys just thought I got to have confidence in yourselves. He's going to stick with Floyd Deppin. Adrian, that's a great point, and I'm sure that what he's trying to tell them is that that age-old gun that they've had pointed at their foot. They need to point it at Oklahoma's foot. Third down, pressure from the outside, and this one is complete to Warren. Colorado will convert the situation as they'll take it to the 43. Wesley defensively. I think the story of the first half has to be the Oklahoma defense. The fact that Reggie Barnes isn't playing, Joe Correa, the defensive lineman, is out. They have so many injuries. This defense really rose to the occasion in the first half and made a lot of plays. Seven to nothing. Oklahoma leads. Early going third quarter. Boulder, Colorado, right here on the campus of the Colorado Buffaloes. And what a great setting with the Rockies in the background, and they've already gotten some snow. The mountains look very inviting. Detmer pass in and out of the hands, and wow, that's Westbrook to drop the football, and he can't believe it. Westbrook is quite a target. 6'4, 210. And Mike, and only a sophomore, are going to be some people trying to get him to take an early leave, I'm sure, with his talents. So Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, says what you worry about Michael Westbrook is that he catches the five yard hitch, and the next thing he turns it into a 65 yard touchdown. He's going to get a breather for a second as Carruth will come in replacing him, number 18. Play action. Held the linebackers that time. Wide open is the tight end. And Faria really delivered a blow just as he caught the football. Coach will finish off the tackle. Corey Detmer has success with this play again. This is the third time they've been able to run this play. He's able to get outside the fake, holds the linebackers, which opens up Christian Faria inside for the big game. This direction holds the linebackers. First and 10, Colorado. 
the Sooners getting the player on the field late. The play came right to him, and Cedric Jones went diving to make the tackle. He was just running on the field. He was at the hash mark as the ball was snapped or the sweep came in his direction. Looked like the defense had a guy in motion. Well, Cedric was in motion. He was coming from the bench. He got on the field late, but they ran the ball right to him. <laughs> Jumping all over the place on defense. That one under pressure, he's going to run. And he is inside the 35-yard line, about a yard shy of the first. Wilson will wrap him up. Ron, the play never had a chance to develop because of the pressure that came from the outside of Oklahoma. It was a good jump. Aubrey Beavers comes inside and a good block by the offensive tackle to block him around and Coy Detmer stepped up in the pocket and picked up the running yardage. Mike, it almost seems like an automatic for teams that play the one back. The minute he goes in motion with no backs, defense is going to blitz you. This time with the running play. Warren breaks off the tackle. He'll have the Colorado first down. Collier will get him. Chrisman upset with himself because he missed it. Oklahoma had the right defensive call on. They brought Drew Christman again, number 24, on the blitz. Nobody picked him up. He just missed the tackle. We talked about early in the ballgame getting that extra back in there on short yardage plays, and on that play, 33 James Hill. You might have noticed that he threw the paving block that helped Lamont Warren get the first down. Now, here's where you see if Colorado made the adjustments at halftime against the blitz. Well, the 25-second clock was all the way down to four, so Detmer called a timeout. We'll take it with him. 11:01 left in the third quarter. Oklahoma, seven to nothing. It all started 35 years ago. I'll never forget that day. It's funny, though. You grow up, raise a family, your priorities change. Of course, there are some priorities that never change. The trick is to make a decision now that you'll be happy with for years to come. Said and done, I think it all goes back to that day 35 years ago. David, are you out there? Get your little behinds in there. All over the world, there's a ritual that takes place right before bedtime. Okay. And don't forget to wash behind your ears. And for over 35 years, one faucet has helped more kids get away with it. And you two better be clean. Or not. Delta, the way water is brought to life. ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Builders of fine automobiles since 1886. And by the car. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Welcome back to Boulder. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. As you get a look at true freshman Coy Detmer from Mission, Texas. James Hill. And he is wrapped up by guess who? Drew Chrisman. You know, we always pick players of the game for both teams. And Oklahoma... <laughs> has got several guys that are fighting for who gets that award tonight. We may have split it up. Ron, you're right. Drew Chrisman has been very active. Now, he missed a tackle to play before, but he's not going to miss the tackle on James Hill this time. Boy, Chrisman, Beavers, also Mike Coates has been in on a number of key plays. Seven to nothing if you've just joined us. Oklahoma leads 10-24, left third quarter. From the back side. Beavers and he will sack him. 
second time that Oklahoma has gotten to Detmer, and the Sooners have the players shaken up. Aubrey Beavers, a lot of the Tex a lot of the Oklahoma coaches compare him to Texas A&M's Quentin Corey out of last year's fame, who went on to the Indianapolis Colts. You see the coming he tried to strip the ball away from Coy Detmer but a good sack by Aubrey Beavers. Aubrey is out of Houston Gates High School. That uh, school has been somewhat of a factory for good college players for a long time. Detmer pass almost intercepted. Darius Johnson almost had the pickoff. Ron Oklahoma has been able to rattle the young freshman tonight Coy Detmer just with different looks different blitzes different people coming in, in the offensive line of Colorado has not been able to protect him Mitch Berger who as I told you averages 46.7 his first punt tonight 57 we'll see how well he can pooch kick here because he's going to be receiving this snap just beyond midfield Inside the 10, and look at this. Down at the five, just beyond the five-yard line. And let's go back to Tim Brando. Tim, what do you have for us? Ron, California's quarterback, Dave Farr, will find Sean Dawkins. This is his third touchdown reception of the day, and I know it's not basketball season yet, but watch this along the sideline. That is a Barishnikov act, baby. It's 27-13, Bears. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I, I was going to tell Timmy, don't say that, because now we'll spend the next five minutes with, with Godfrey whispering to me, who's Boris McCarthy? He must play for somebody on the coast. Play for the Steelers. Awesome. <laughs> Beavers, we mentioned that he's one of the guys that has had such an exceptional night for the Oklahoma Sooners. Got a touchdown to his credit on a fumble recovery. An interception also has a sack. Big opening, five yards, past 10, and Williams off to the races out across the 25-yard line. Dion figures, makes the stop, and Mike Gottfried, explain what happens here. Ernest Williams is an interesting player, and he really causes problems for the defense because he can line up as a tailback, but he's also shipped out as a receiver, so you have to really play him both ways. Just a very good hole by the offensive line, Ernest Williams capitalized on it, but I believe it's going to come back. So the penalty takes it back to the three-yard line. So we race a run that took the ball out over the 25-yard line. Illegal procedure against the Sooners, very costly. Rashid and the fullback being hit by Chad Brown and pushed backwards. Regardless of the fact that that play came back, I have a feeling that Mike, Mike Hankwitz is going to have a good talking to with his ball club because Davis missed a tackle on that. Uh, oh, Colorado, uncharacteristically, has missed a lot of tackles in this ball game. Very sound on defense. Uh, Gary Gibbs told us the other day, you see Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, that this defense of Colorado is dominating like Washington's or like Miami, and he felt like it was like the 85 defense at Oklahoma, that they dominate the game. Official timeout is being called. They brought another football in for the sideline. No place for Brewer to go that time. Diet, the first man to step up into the hole to make the hit. Then you could see 56, Wolfork. And it's going to be third down Sooners. The line to make is the 16. You Oklahoma, 7 0. Ron, me. you just have to keep going back. It, Oklahoma just keeps hurting themselves with penalties. I mean, that all night uh, is stop drives and put them in tough situations to overcome.
broken up the middle will have the first down plus five. Lindsey finally grabbed the hold of Brewer, but the senior from Lawton will move the sticks again. Kale Gundy with a check off against that same front, but instead of throwing this time, gets away with a run. You see the defensive players from Colorado were in pretty good shape, Ron, to stop that play. Missed tackles again. Duel Brewer, number 23. That was a big game. Shannon Pavel, who missed that one, number 92, as you look at the rushing yards. 43 and 23. Two very difficult defenses to run against. Gundy. He'll head to the sideline. Chad Brown hide in pursuit after him. Ron, he's an interesting story. I talked to him earlier in the season, and he was telling me when he was being recruited, he went to Alabama on his first visit, said he had a great visit, and then Homer Smith, the quarterback coach, left, and Bill Curry decided to leave, so went home, told his mom, son, at this point, went to Clemson on the next visit, said, I really like Clemson, but then Danny Ford and Jack Crow left, and so two visits, two staff left, and he wanted to go to UCLA, but... They were not going to take any quarterbacks, so it came down to OU and Notre Dame. And, of course, Larry Coker, who coached his brother, went to Oklahoma, and uh, he's very happy to be a Sooner. That was the end of that story. Going to go up on top. Warren, he's got it. Foot race. Warren tripped up by Dion Figures inside the 20. The first thing we look for, no laundry on the field. First and 10, Oklahoma. Corey Warren came out of high school football. He played defensive back and wide receiver. Coaches feel he has a defensive mentality. He's a tough receiver. Over the shoulder catch. Avoids a tackle. Dion figures number two stays with it and makes a desperation tackle to stop the touchdown. 57 yards. Sacked by Beaker. See Mike Hankowitz calling the blitz. Greg Beaker, number 19, is going to come on a blitz. Kenyon Rashid, number 33, was responsible for him, but he was going to try to release on the pass and didn't pick up Greg Beaker. Rashid didn't see him until he was past him, and he gave him the Matador move, didn't he? Ole. Ole. <laughs> yeah. Brewer hit behind the line of scrimmage and will be knocked down for a loss. Greg Lindsay is a man who caught him around the ankles, and look, all of a sudden, it's going to be a third down Oklahoma, and following the reception, they're looking at a third down and almost 15, Mike. The way Gary Gibbs has to think about this now is the way his defense is playing, the three points will be big. Now, you still want to try to pick up the first down and, of course, the touchdown, but you don't want a mistake here. You want to take us, you want to be able to try to get the first down, but also a chance to kick that field goal. Third down, the line to make, the Colorado 7. Chad Brown puts it into the running play as the Sooners play it conservative and just what uh, Mike Godfrey was talking about. They're going to send Blanton on well within his range and he's kicking with the wind has subsided some here in uh, in Boulder. So this is well within his reach. 52 his longest and let's call this one a 37 yard attempt. Plenty of distance and he is good. So let's take a timeout. 4.55 left in the third period. Oklahoma 10 and Colorado nothing. Bud Dry is one beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. So why not come around to something refreshingly different? Try Bud Dry. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think? Skin Bracer Aftershave. I'm men. 
I saw those lights, and even though I was only five, I knew something terrible had happened. First, I saw the cars. They were, I don't know, mangled. My father told me not to look, but I had to. I remember seeing this little boy. We made eye contact. I could see the fear in his eyes. It's something I'll never forget. No. I don't drive a Mercedes to impress my friends. We've been under trickle-down economics for 12 years. Just keep taxes low on the wealthy and see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what's happened. Most Americans are working harder for less money. Unemployment's up. Health care costs are exploding. We are not doing what it takes to compete and win. I've worked hard on a different plan. Let's give incentives to invest in new jobs. Let's spend more on education and training. Let's provide basic health care to all Americans. Putting our people first, rebuilding this economy, making us competitive. If we do those things, we'll compete and win, and we'll bring this country back. Leading Heisman hopeful Marshall Falk leads San Diego State's ground attack against Air Force next Saturday on ESPN. Ten to nothing, our score. As you look at Bradford on the near sideline, and uh, he got himself caught in a tough situation on that last series. And the long pass to Corey Warren was the big one that led to the field goal. Blanton's kick was a knuckler. He's going to go back into the end zone. And Adrian Carson with a special interview. Adrian. Ron, our special guest is Bill Murrell, the athletic director here at the University of Colorado. Bill. Coach McCartney told his team at halftime he had great confidence in them. Well, things always have been so golden here at Colorado, especially in 1984 when Bill went 1-10. in You showed great confidence in him. Well, I think one of the things that I've learned through the years that a key to program success is confidence in your people and taking a long view, uh, allowing your people to develop and build their programs, and that's really what we did in 84 when we extended Coach McCartney's contract. May come back after this play, Bill. Okay, Adrian, we will. We'll get right back to you. On first down... With the running play. Wow. Warren has turned to flip, and Adrian, back to you. Well, Ron, that looks more like the play of from 85 and on, but he says the passing offense is the offense of the future. Well, the future is now, particularly with your schedule this year and next through the year 2000. Well, that's exactly right. We, you can only look one game ahead at a time. We've got a great schedule this year. Next year is even tougher. We think can, to be able to compete that we've got to have an offense of the 90s, and so we've gone to the one back, and we're going to throw the wall a lot. Coach of the U.S. ski team for six years, what are you doing here now? Well, I'm a Colorado and just have an end up here at the right place at the right time. Complete to Charles Johnson. And they're going to spot him down just to cross the 30-yard line. Your football coach, Ron, you like the ADs like Bill Moreau because he stayed with Bill McCartney. Well, you know, let me make a point. And by the way, Adrian, thanks so much for getting him because... You know, Gary Gibbs has been under so much pressure at Oklahoma. Now, I'm not going to tell the good folks in Oklahoma how to run their business, but Bill McCartney was 2-8-1, 4-7-0, 1-10, 7-5, and 6-6. And and six and six. He only won 20 ball games his first five years, but they stayed with it. Detmer will be sacked, and again, it is Audrey, Aubrey Beavers who is there to make the sack. This is how the Buffaloes accomplished it. Is that you saying Ole? No, that was Adrian. <laughs> so it paid off. The confidence in Coach Bill McCartney. Three straight Big A titles for his ball club. Pass is complete to Westbrook. And let's go back to Tim Brando for an update. Timmy. Fellas, Bill Curry got a contract extension last year after his team went 0-7 in the SEC. Here, Terry Samuels plows in from two yards out, and a team that's been winless on the road in this league, Kentucky leading on the road on the Bayou. Big one for the Cats, up by seven points, playing down at Baton Rouge, which the place has not always been kind to them. Now, Curry Home is playing with a lot of young players down there trying to rebuild. Third down, you see the pressure from the outside. That time, Colorado picked it up, and there comes the flag. Westbrook was interfered with by William Shankle. Defensive pass interference on 91st down. 
The interference call will be made on William Shankle, number eight in the white jersey. Let's watch the play. Over the back of Michael Westbrook. William Shankle, a senior out of Woodle Ridge, which is just south of Houston. He had to give it the protest, which is what you have to do, but he came by way of Oak Mulgee on that. <laughs> Oklahoma, nine penalties, 88 yards. But the Sooners lead it, 10 to nothing. 243 left in the third quarter. Beckner again over the middle. This time Embry, the tight end. And he takes it to the 46 and a half. Mike Coates is holding on. We talked about Bill Marote, the athletic director of Colorado. On the other side of the coin, you have Donnie Duncan, a former head football coach in college circles as the AD at Oklahoma and has very solid control of that program and believes in Gary Gibbs to, that he's the coach for Oklahoma. Pressure up the middle. Detmer gets by the first wave. Here comes Beavers and he will get it. Wow. The 256 is on defense. Wolfork for Colorado and 56 Beavers for Oklahoma have just been phenomenal tonight. Gary Gibbs told Aubrey Beavers before the game, without Reggie Barnes, you're going to have to turn it up a notch. Number 56 in the white jersey is turning up the heat. He's able to get off the block of number 72, Derek West, and then it's a foot race that he wins. Third down, Colorado. Line to make is the 48 of Oklahoma. Here comes the safety blitz again. Pass to Johnson. Charles Johnson, the senior from San Bernardino, California. Ron, you're right. You, you saw the safety blitz coming in through Chris, Christman, number 24, but Colorado picked it up. They blocked it this time and gave Coy Detmer the time to find his receiver. Good look at Brian Stoltenberg there. He's a redshirt freshman out of Sugarland, Texas. Actually played it. Clements High School, just south of Houston. And, of course, Coy Detmer is out of Mission, Texas. So a couple of Texas youngsters had to get together on the exchange from center tonight as you saw the numbers on Detmer. Going to go long. Puts it up on top. Westbrook is there. Good score. Westbrook got Darnell Walker turned in a circle, caught it for the touchdown, and Berger tries to make this a three-point football game. Kick is perfect. So we'll take a break. 54 seconds left. Third quarter, 10-7, Oklahoma. I'm giving it to her. Yes. Did you find what you're looking for? You wanted me to see you with her, didn't you? You'd like to save substantial equity when you sell your home? Sure, but how? Help You Sell. Help You Sell has a nationally proven way to market your home. Help You Sell helps you save. You just show your home. We do all the rest. From advertising to contract writing through closing. And at Help You Sell, there are no advance or upfront fees. Help You Sell knows the South Metro Marketplace. Help You Sell, the better way to sell your home. Athletics has affected my life in, uh, in positive ways. I think the concept of team can't be learned in any better way. I've seen a lot of guys who are good enough to get into college and uh, thought they were good enough to get into pros, and so they weren't really concerned about their college education, and that's backfiring on them now. So I can't overemphasize how important uh, your education is. There's nothing like it.
This message provided by the NCAA. Westbrook on the sideline. Mike, could you read his rest? It looked like it said mercy. <laughs> his sixth touchdown pass of the year. Seven tonight for 92 yards. Sooners will not return this one. Colorado has had success with the bootleg play and hitting the tight end over the middle. But on this play, it's the wide receiver, Michael Westbrook, that Corey Detmer looks to get to. He's in pretty good coverage by Darnell Walker and then just leaves him. Now, Darnell Walker complained a little bit that he felt Michael Westbrook was pushing off. Here's Corey Detmer looking to Michael Westbrook all the way over the shoulder catch. Reaction of Coy Detmer. Colorado's defense, Beekert and Chad Brown combining to stop the run after only about a yard. Detmer, you could see his reaction after three interceptions in the first half realizing that uh, the fate could be very much different in the second half. He just had to have confidence and turn it around, and he did. His ball club back in it. And with his Colorado defense, it doesn't take a whole lot of points to put your case to rest. Pushed out of bounds just shy of the 30 yard line by Dion Figures. Kale Gundy's also made some good adjustments in the second half versus the Blitz. Able to pick out the open receiver and pick up the easy throw. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. Oklahoma 10, Colorado 7. Third down. They need about a yard and a half. Rashid. Brewer, I beg your pardon. 15, 10, 5, touchdown to Al Brewer. Two yards. Ron, they caught Colorado on the blitz. And there was nobody home in center field. Couple of secondary folks, but all they could do was watch. Extra point attempt is up and is good by Blanton. And with that, the end of the third quarter with our new score, Oklahoma 17, Colorado 7. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste, why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different, but dry. dinosaurs were alive during the Cretaceous period, which was toward the end of the Mesozoic era. What if we said you could go to the Smithsonian anytime you wanted without leaving your living room? Wow. Awesome. <gasps> and what if we told you you could hold an entire pinball arcade in the palm of your hand? The inventors of CD technology have captured some of the most entertaining and educational experiences imaginable and put them on a new kind of compact disc called CD Interactive. Philips CD Interactive transforms your television from something you look at and listen to into something you actually experience. CD Interactive, available only on the Imagination Machine, the world's first CDI player and another first from Philips. Real 
adventure. The Discovery Channel. It's your world. Two, two, two. The Postal Service would like to present two-day priority mail. That's delivery in just two days of up to two pounds for just $2.90. Two. Remember, two, two days, two, two pounds, two. $2.90. Two. 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 Two day priority mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. For pickup service, call 1 800 222 1811. Good morning, America! Good morning! Good morning! Wake up! Wake up, you sleepyhead! Good, Good morning, morning to you and you and you! Get up! Get up! Get out of bed! Every morning all across America. Over 50 million people come to life with Delta faucets. Live, love, laugh, and be happy. Good morning, good morning. Delta, good morning the way water is to brought to life. <laughs> Mike Hankwitz walks to the sideline talking with Dion Figures following that uh, long touchdown run by Dwell Brewer. And the Oklahoma Sooners have quieted this crowd just moments ago toward the end of the period the crowd had really gotten back into it but the home run so to speak of 72 yards quieted him again Blanton's kick Larry Coker the offensive coordinator is going to catch Colorado in the defense and there's three key blocks on this play Kenyon Rashid, number 33, in the backside guard, number 62, Broderick Roberson, block Greg Beaker, and then it's all the way to the yard for number 23, Duell Brewer. Brewer didn't waste much time once he got into the open field. He, he took it back toward the middle and took it in for the score. Ball is tipped and almost intercepted. Again, Aubrey Beavers. Aubrey Beavers is making a statement tonight that he is one of the best outside linebackers in the Big Eight, maybe in the in the whole country. Number 56 just starting to round in the condition. Ron is a player. Sat out last year and uh, is just getting better with every game. Dickmer as a flag goes down. Fourier, the tight end, has it complete short of the first down. But that has been thrown back at the offensive line as Mike Coates is there defensively. Holding Colorado. Bill McCartney talked about the speed of Oklahoma. Concerned about their foot speed. He cut back practice 20 minutes each practice. He wanted his legs back. He wanted fast legs against this Oklahoma defense. And he used the term, we want to block them twice on every play. Well, the Oklahoma defense has just surrounded this Colorado offense tonight. Detmer going up on top, and he's got Johnson wide open at the 50. Another foot race. Charles Johnson will score from 92 yards away. This place is still buzzing. Berger tries to make it a three-point game. High pass from center. It's good.
Coy Detmer with the takeoff pass play to Charles Johnson, and it's against Darnell Walker, number 28. I think there's a bust in coverage because it looked like Darnell Walker, number 28, was looking for help over the top from William Shankle, number 8. The individual isolation, he just runs right by Darnell Walker. You're going to see number 8 come into your picture. Just outran the coverage. Reaction by Coy Detmer. So, here are the numbers. Charles Johnson, seven catches, 151 yards, and a touchdown. Now Detmer is 23 of 33, 307 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. And Mike, I want to make a point of one thing that happened just a moment ago in the extra point attempt. May seem small, but could be big in this ballgame. Duke Tobin is the holder, and he had to stand up almost to receive a high pass from center, allowing Colorado to convert the extra point. And now a three-point game rather than a four-point game. He played by Duke Tobin, who's the who's another quarterback that's won games for this Colorado team, and he's a very good, solid quarterback. Boy, this kick is going to go way on through the uprights. <laughs> Tim Brando, we're rocking down here. What have you got? <laughs> In Baton Rouge, I've got a couple of defenses that can't stop offenses, Ron. Robert Toomer, one of the baby Bengals Mike Godfrey was mentioning, he takes off 30 yards. He's a true freshman. That ties the game at 17. But the big blue come roaring back. Damon Hood in from two yards out. Kentucky leading 24-17. Still plenty of time in the fourth. So the Wildcats holding on there. Our situation. 14-28 to play. Oklahoma 17 to 14. And I know the, the World Series started tonight, but I think we've had more home runs here in Boulder. Okay, we got some noise here now. Gundy whips his pass complete. P.J. Mills. Ball is loose. Rashid is after it. And Kenyon will make the recovery. Ron, you're right. We've had more home runs in the World Series, but I can guarantee you we've had more errors, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, the pitcher's ERAs wouldn't be very good in this one. <laughs> A lot of knuckleballs in this game. Williams comes into the backfield replacing Bull. Listen to this crowd. <laughs> Ernest Williams picks up a block on the outside. Flag comes in at the 22-yard line as Bradford is the first man there to put the stop on him. Officials have been busy tonight. Well, another penalty against the Sooners. By the way, I've just been handed this note. Offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Illegal use of hands is the call, so the penalty pushes it back to the 11 yard line. And Michael, the touchdown pass play of 92 yards a moment ago is the longest pass play in Colorado history. interference going to be called against Colorado Chris Hudson almost took his head off 
And the reason for it, I believe it was Ernest Williams who was about to break free over the middle. Ron, that's the college rule there because it'll go back to the line of scrimmage. Defensive pass interference, 15-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Chris Hudson, Chris Hudson may have saved a touchdown by that interference. That goes all the way back to the 26-yard line, so really not a good play. You never want a pass interference play, but not a bad play on that one because they were out of they were out of coverage. They were in bad shape. Could have had another near home run, at least extra bases on that one. So it does carry a first down. That's the rule we talked about last year several times. You'd like to see change. Yeah, I, I don't like that rule at all because I think it really handicaps the offense. Now here comes one flag and another flag from down inside. Beaker to, and Brown there to step up and make the hit along with Elder. Dead ball. Ball start offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's what the noise will do now that the fans are back in this ball game. Get a little jump start. Can't hear the cadence by Keo Gundy. Keo looking over to get the signal from the near sideline, but the down will remain the same. Now the Colorado defense continues to ask the crowd to come on back and help us. And here they come again. On top, tip, and intercepted by Hudson. the benefit of that college interference we just talked about a little bit ago you give up a little penalty and now you're back in shape Dion figures is going to get his hand on this and then Chris Hudson just stretches out and becomes a receiver for the interception third Oklahoma turnover Buffalo's had five once and then gets leveled from behind by Corey Wilson the junior from Richardson Texas fourth sack of gun day by Oklahoma tonight I want to talk again about the offensive line when you when you switch from a option attack one of the problems you have when you go to pass blocking is Mike Barry talked about his lineman wanted to attack him right at the line of scrimmage like you do in a run but you have to give some ground on that defensive front and pass protection Sooners go with a 4-2-5 defensively. Gummy, good protection. Pumps again, now rolls the pocket. Beavers is down. Gets his pass away. That's T.J. Cunningham. And I'll give Detmer credit. He is just like his older brother. Has absolute ice water because he saw he was going to get crushed and still held on to the football to Shankel hitting. He bought some time because Aubrey Beavers was blocked and then lost contained. Boy, Detmer gets some time, points where he wants his receiver to go to. Number eight, TJ Cunningham with the reception. And folks, this is a freshman. Last year he was playing high school football in Mission, Texas, and he's stopping and pointing his receiver to move on downfield. Playing in Tom Landry Stadium down there in Mission, Texas. It was great poise. Pressure up the middle. Pass is complete. And Lamont Warren will take it to the 36-yard line, but most importantly, a third down conversion and a first down Colorado. Ron, you're right. You talk about a young freshman, but the key here might be as you watch Boy, Detmer go back. This may be his best play of the night because there's just no one blocking the inside backer, and then he's able to throw the ball to Lamont Warren. Mario Freeman is the man who's coming after him, Mike. Look, at Mario Freeman has a straight shot to him, but he's able to get the ball away from the game to Lamont Warren. Oklahoma by three. We're about to go under 11 minutes left to play in the ball game. Ball is drilled to Westbrook. And Tim Brando, let's get an update from you. What a remarkable comeback between USC and California. This is Estrus Creighton cracking in from a yard out. They were down 24 to 13 at one point. 
Now, Russell White did not play, didn't make the trip. He had groin and elbow injuries, but SC comes back to win it by three. Trojans. Wow. Westbrook, who caught the pass, will go out. Carruth will come in replacing him. He's a freshman from Sacramento. Speaking of SC, of course, Sacramento in the northern part of the state. Straight ahead with James Hill, who gets a carry. And he's going to have the first down in second effort. Trey Tippins holding on for dear life. First and ten, Buffalo. And take a little pressure off Coy Detmer if they could get a little bit more going in the running game. James Hill, number 33, is going the straightaway zone play. Just keeps running through tackles and picks up good yardage. Mitchell and Carruth both with good blocks in the play. Pass incomplete and a very smart move there because John Anderson was holding all over Detmer and he did have a receiver in the area. Now John Anderson at the end of the play just smacked his hand against the turf because he knew that Tom Hayes had dialed up a great defensive call. Number 39 is right in the face of Coy Detmer, but Coy Detmer is able to get the ball away and throw it away and avoid the sack. Second down. Wide open over the middle, and he almost throws an interception, but that ball was trapped. The only person I could see in the area was T.J. Cunningham, and it looked as though that maybe Detmer got it off the wrong foot and just floated it over his head. Well, here's a freshman, oh, number 14. He went right to the receiver, number 9, Charles Johnson, and Jr., and told him, you busted the route. You're supposed to be on a corner route. Poorly thrown ball, but he's directing traffic out there like he's a veteran. Westbrook is out, and again, it's Caruth into the lineup. Number 18. Looking for Caruth, and he has the catch at the 21. Now it is going to be fourth down. Now you take the tie. You try to go for the tie. Well... Mitch Berger is coming on to attempt this field goal rather than Blato. He missed back in the first half. Kick is on its way. Plenty of distance. Off to the left. Well off to the left. And no good. So they'll take a break as Colorado runs a foul with field goal attempts. 17-14. OU on top. That's right. Only Ford Truck offers driver airbags in both mini and full-size vans. But there's a lot more to safety than that. That's why Ford not only designs and builds trucks to meet or exceed federal crash test requirements, we also do special safety testing of our own. We do what the government says and a lot more. The best-built, best-selling American trucks are built Ford Tough. Good times with friends. Pay their special. Sometimes you wish they would never end. You can show it's just a special. Friends know when to say when. The family of Budweiser beers is proud of all the friendships they've helped make. So when they remind you to please use a designated driver, it's all in the name of friendship. Friends know when to say when. Your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No, a car loan, Leona. Fast forward. Home improvement loan. Hey. It's a General Motors car. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck. Get GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around Do we here? have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a print calendar. If I can only find it. ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? 
and by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. Back to a very noisy Boulder, Colorado. As you look at the freshman, talking with his receivers, Troy Detmer. What has been a very rapidly played ball game, although we have had a lot of passes thrown in it tonight. Rashid takes it straight ahead, and I would I would imagine that if Oklahoma can get away with a like 66-33 breakdown of run pass with this three-point lead, that we'd see it right now, don't you? Well, this is the problem when you throw the ball as much as both these teams do is trying to run clock. There's 842 left to go. You have to do it by throwing the football. And here comes Jimmy with just that out of the backfield, Rashid. He will take it to the 35 and still fighting for the 38. John Knutson is there defensively. Kenyon Rashid just becomes more valuable to this offense in a running game. He's able to catch the football coming out of the backfield. He's a blocker in the eye formation. Uh, just does it all back there for Oklahoma. defense Rashid takes it for five yards Beekert is down at the bottom of the stack this last eight minutes is going to be long to Kenyon Rashid if they can hold on to the football he's going to run it he's going to be the pass receiver a primary receiver of Kale Gundy's Try to control the clock with the big fullback. 5'11 and 241 pounds out of Rockhurst High School, Kansas City, Missouri. Thought he was going to Penn State. But four days before the signing date, visited with Barry Switzer, changed his mind. Said he was going to Norman. Brewer this time gets treated rudely in the middle of the line. And now a very big third down Oklahoma as Clavel makes the defensive play. The strategy becomes clear with 7 12 on the clock. The Colorado has two timeouts left. Oklahoma has three. Got to put a stop to this drive. Gonna have to hurry. 25 second clock is down to seven, down to six, down to five. Gundy is gonna call timeout. He looked up and saw it and realized he'd never get it off. So let's take a timeout. 6.46 to play in the ball game. Sooners by three. All four Escort LX models equipped with air conditioning, AM FM stereo, power steering, and more. Now share the same low price of just $10,499. Four Escorts, one price. It's that easy. Just northwest of Kalispell, Montana, there's a place where you can punch cattle instead of a time clock. And discover what horsepower is really about. It's the Hargrave Cattle and Guest Ranch, where you can ride them and rope them like they used to. But if you go, you got to pull your own weight and pull out your piece of card. Because at Hargrave, they don't take the tin horns, and they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Not long ago, the fellas over at the country club gave Ed Hansel a little party. You see, in over 40 years, Ed, Ed never missed a day at the club. Every afternoon, just after three, like clockwork, there's Ed. Ed. A banker by trade Ed. is a master at knowing just how to fill all that leisure time. Unfortunately, banker's hours may not be your hours when buying a car. So finance your new vehicle with GMAC right at your GM dealership. Nobody knows more about auto financing and leasing. And we don't keep Ed. banker's hours. Introducing Ford Taurus and the Dummy. Ford has the only cars in this class that offer dual airbags. And to help make sure you won't have to use them, Taurus also offers anti-lock brakes. Ford Taurus. Leading Heisman hopeful Marshall Falk leads San Diego State's ground attack against Air Force next Saturday on ESPN. 
Brad Riddell, number 84, looking onto the field. Prepared to help his teammates, but he hoped he doesn't have to. He hopes he doesn't because it's third down. And you can see how many yards they need right there. Riddell will have to come out and punt as the Sooners are dropped for a loss. Diet Bryan, a junior from Arvada, Colorado. Oklahoma tried to sneak the draw up inside the Colorado defense. Figured they'd be in a heavy pass rush on third in the passing situation. Sneak Kenyon Rashid inside. Nothing there. Dion figures. And let's take a look. You get a great angle from up top, and you can see the coverage by Oklahoma, and you can also see what, what Colorado is doing, whether they have a, will have a return on or whether they will go after the kick. Well, Kale Gundy's still on the field arguing with official. What he's arguing about. Oh, he wants a different football. He's complaining about the football. A lot of times you use different footballs when Oklahoma's in there, supposed to use their football, maybe they got the Colorado ball in there by mistake. They kept shaking that thing, too. You know how sometimes you get a piece of rubber in there and you get a rattle? <laughs> <laughs> no, no distractions right now. That's after you get hit by those lines and you hear a rattle. Oh, what a kick into the wind. Wow. Figures all the way back to the seven-yard line. 50 yards on the kick at Adrian Karsten. What do you have for us? Well, Ron, the ramifications of that missed field goal moments ago by Colorado... Pat Blatto injured his right kicking leg, actually pulled his quadricep in his kicking leg, and he said he really lost the whip, of course, in that soccer-style kick, which makes all the difference. Therefore, they had to send Berger in. He was not ready to kick, and he saw the result. Bottom line is, the most significant injury in this game occurred before the game actually started. Could bring the Buffalo's winning streak in the Big 8 to a conclusion. Okay, Adrian, great hustle. Good story. Six oh one to play. Oklahoma by three. Detmer over the middle throws it complete to Westbrook. Oklahoma trying to wrestle the ball away at the 15 yard line. Well, the thing about Westbrook, Mike, you can get him a five, six, or seven yard pass, and it can turn into 80 real quickly. Well, he can. He's six four, 210 pounds, with excellent speed out of Chadsey High School, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, just runs very well after the catch. down you can see that there was no nobody not a definitive receiver out there in the area maybe that's the reason for the flag they're gonna call procedure against the Buffaloes well be sure to be with our NFL crew tomorrow at noon Eastern time of the most comprehensive pregame show on television NFL game day and some things that they'll have for you uh, Mark Griffin's up and down season with Washington and also, Joe Theismann visits with Steve Young. Then after the action is settled, tomorrow catch every highlight of every game on NFL Primetime. It's all tomorrow, right here on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten, and glad to have you along from Boulder, Colorado. 521 left to play in the ballgame. It is Oklahoma, 17-14. So Colorado calls a timeout, and we'll take it with them. Could the string be coming to an end tonight? 521 will tell us. Control the ball with players like these. Forget the ball. Try and stay on your feet. And a coach like this. Anybody who coaches a girls' soccer team is completely nuts. The ladybugs need more than practice. You're in a different time zone. They need a miracle. Why me? Why me? Rodney Dangerfield. All I know is I got a lot of balls. Ladybugs. In about the time it takes you to read this, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee can go from zero to 60. In about the time it takes you to read this, Grand Cherokee can go from 60 to zero. And in a fraction of the time it takes you to read this, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee could save your life. Maybe it's time for you to test drive one now at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. 
Wednesday night, Top Rank Boxing showcases powerful new junior welterweight Ricky Myers in the biggest fight of his career against former world champion Rossi Bramble. Top Rank Boxing, Wednesday night, live on ESPN. I knew that we were going to crash. I grabbed hold of the steering wheel as hard as I could, but still, a 175-mile-an-hour impact on the left side is that's a pretty serious impact. And to be honest with you, I shouldn't have walked away from that. Bill McCartney, knowing that several streaks are on the line, the most important thing, though, is the battle for the Orange Bowl and the Big A title this year. Pass knocked away at the 20-yard line as reaching around with Shankel. Well, he made a great play, William Shankel, because he avoided the interception with his body. He almost had to come through number eight, T.J. Cunningham, but by using his arm, he avoided the interference. Watch him come around here with his arm. A nice job of defensive play. I think he liked it. His bicycle pedaling from there on in. It's a mountain bike. Third down, Detmer. Intercepted by Oklahoma. Johnson will score. Darius Johnson, the freshman from Terrell, Texas, with the interception. Six turnovers, Colorado, four interceptions. Blanton's extra point attempt is up, and he's good. And Mike, this crowd is stunned. Well, both the crowd and the Colorado football team stunned right now. Talk about freshman quarterbacks. And boy, Detmer sets up to throw the curl route for the first down. See, pretty good protection, but Darius Johnson, number 42, steps in front of the curl route and turns it into seven points. I can remember Troy Aikman's first game was against us at Kansas, and we picked off several, several passes and were able to upset Oklahoma when he was a freshman quarterback. Tough on the freshmen. They have to learn. This is a learning experience tonight for Coy Detmer. Well, there's, as we mentioned, so much on the line tonight. Here are the unbeaten streaks. As far as in Big 8 conference competition, Colorado 22-0-1, 1988 to date. And right now, they have 5-0-9 to avoid disaster. Now, he's got the weapons, speaking to Bill McCartney, as he paces the sidelines. But the thing tonight that has plagued them, not only an outstanding Oklahoma defense, but six turnovers, four interceptions. You can't blame them all on the freshman. This Oklahoma defense, injuries and all, has come in here and just played a miraculous football game. Ron, you got to dig deeper, though. You got to dig deeper into this thing. And rushing yardage, they haven't been able to run the football. So that means all the pressure falls on the quarterback in the passing game when you can't run the football. If there's no disguise of whether it's going to be a run or pass, then you're throwing against heavy coverage. And that's exactly what has happened tonight. And the Sooners have been able to run the football. Blanton's kick. This one will come down to Eric Mitchell. John Anderson on the special teams, and as we check down on the field and watch the Colorado Buffaloes coming back on the field, Coy Detmer goes into the huddle quickly, talking to his teammates, and, you know, I, I know he has had a night that, that he would like to quickly forget, Mike, but he still has all the poise and confidence in the world. He believes he can win this football game, I think. Steps up, drills the pass, complete to Poirier, his tight end going to be good for about five yards. It's Coates and Mario Freeman defensively. All week, if you're here at Colorado, you heard about all the Oklahoma defensive players that were not going to play in the game. 
Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, rallied this bunch tonight because they won this football game on defense. Goes up on top, looking for Johnson. It is intercepted Darnell Walker. His third interception of the night. Drew Chrisman has won. Five interceptions, seven Colorado turnovers. It's the third interception yeah. for Darnell yeah. Walker for tonight. They had two passes that they threw over top of him tonight. One, I think, was a busted coverage. So he's been a very active young man tonight. 5'8", 164-pound senior. So the conversation on the sideline right now for that young fella is very important and also the one that he'll have in the locker room. And screaming and shouting is not the answer. That's not what he's accustomed to and not the way to handle it for that matter, is it? Ball is loose. Colorado still fighting for the football and Brown has picked it up. But Chad Brown was trying to figure a way to run it. <laughs> he was down. The smart football player was trying to figure out how to get up and run with it. I think Elder's going to cause this fumble, Mike, when we look at the replay. Just a straight handoff to Kenyon yep. Rashid, and uh, you're Marcellus right. knocked it out. Marcellus Elder, number 97, caused a fumble. Take a second look. See the big fullback come through. The ball squirts out. Chad Brown, 34 recovers. Not without a little duress first. So the situation, 427 left in the ball game. Oklahoma by 10, Colorado with the football and markers down all over. It looked like they moved a little bit before the snap, Colorado. Ball start offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Gary Gibbs would like to have a little relaxing win here. The fat lady's getting ready to start gargling, and he and then they turn it over. So you know he he can't even relax on the sideline. A chance for a, a big win here tonight against Colorado, and uh, he's got to sweat it out. 4:26 on the clock. Just put a parka back on the fat lady. <laughs> that is complete at the 26-yard line to Charles Johnson. And the way he turned around, you almost thought that they were going to try to set up the old hook and ladder play. Didn't he look like he was looking for somebody made it look? You're right, Ron. Looked like that possibility was there, but the defense there was on him too quick before he could pitch it. Detmer points to his receiver. Throws complete to Johnson inside the 10. Oklahoma decided to sit back that time, play his own defense, see if he'd throw one to them this time, an interception, but Coy Detmer just bought some time, picked out a receiver that was open, and keeps moving the chains. From the eight. Warren picked up the blitz this time, the pass to Westbrook, is incomplete. Well, the Sooners tried to sneak that man through and try to put pressure on the quarter, but that time, Lamont Warren came up and really belted him. He really did make a great block there. Colorado went with a real close set where all three receivers are in close and tried to get Michael Westbrook outside. Charles Johnson came open inside. I don't know if they'll come back to that formation, but if they do, they should look for Charles Johnson because he's the one that came free. It's a run. Lamont Warren at the three-yard line. Darius Johnson, who had the interception for a touchdown a moment ago, saved a touchdown here. Well, a great call by Les Steckle, the offensive coordinator. Everybody in this ballpark thought it was going to be a throw. Just a draw. Look how it opens up inside. Lamont Warren tried to break it outside. Darius Johnson makes the tackle. What you'd like your back to do is they're just uh, stay straight and head up and get as much as you can get. That's a really good open field tackle because it looked for the world as though Warren was heading for the end zone. Under three and a half to play. And now an official timeout is called. 
The 25 second clock, Mike, I have to wonder if it was malfunctioning because it showed zero, but no whistle or delay of game had been called. This is a break for Colorado because it gives them time to set up a play, a little bit more time to decide what plays best against this Oklahoma defense. See Bill McCartney talking to Mike Berry, the offensive line coach. Clock is running again. 3.23 left to play. Oklahoma by 10. Warren, right side. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Or Colorado. Around the fat lady can go get a hot dog because it's going to be a long three minutes and 14 seconds before she starts singing just yet. 3.14 to play. Warren takes it in for the Colorado touchdown. And now the extra point attempt becomes even more important. With the injury to Blotto, Mitch Berger attempting the extra point. Again, it's Duke Tobin holding. Knocks it home. We have a three-point ball game. And one more look at the touch. Tailback counterplay to Lamont Warren with James Hill picking up a block inside for him. Clint Moore, number 66, leading the way, and Lamont Warren in the end zone for the touchdown. Now you have to think onside kick, whether you're going to onside kick now and, and draw the circle the wagons right now and, and try to win the game with the onside kick, or do you kick them deep and you have one timeout left and try to hold them down there and, and make a punt out of their own into the field? It's a decision Bill McCartney has to face with right now. Well, the special teams coaches gathering their teams on both sides of the field. I think with 314 and as good a defense as I have at Colorado, I'm kicking it deep. And I'm going to try to pin them back there with the one timeout. Hope that I can hold them and get the football in good position to try to win it at the end. Coming up next, the residents in college scoreboard show. Well, we've had some big ones today. Tennessee falls at home to Alabama. South Carolina gets in the win column with a victory over Mississippi State in the Southeastern Conference. Big win for Sparky Wood. Glad to see it. One of just a number of games that they'll talk about coming up immediately following this one. Mitch Berger, because of that injury to Blato, will kick it off. Oklahoma is not expecting the onside kick. They don't have an onside return. They're playing their regular kickoff return people in there. They're expecting them to kick it deep. Kicks it away. And again, this one's going to go all the way out of the back of the end zone. So the Sooners will take it over at the 20-yard line. 3.14 left on the clock. Well, they're going to turn it over their defense in this crowd of Colorado Buffalo fans now. the tough thing for the Oklahoma offense and this gentleman, K.O. Gundy, they are operating from the horseshoe end of the stadium, which is the student section, and it's a lot noisier down there. Remember, when you're a throwing football team, now all of a sudden you're trying to kill the clock and running the football. Well, this time, Williams takes it for very nearly five yards. Dwayne Davis holding on for dear life. Good first down play by Oklahoma, five yards. And Adrian Carston, what do you have for us? On with a game on the line. The Buffalo defense is in there with these instructions. Force them into a passing situation, second long, third long. Then go after J.C. Conrad, the freshman center. Send Renfro and Rogers right over the top of it. Okay, we'll keep an eye. It is second and five. That opportunity right now as Rashid barrels his way for close to 10 yards. Chad Brown finally trips him up. And now, two minutes and 27 seconds showing on the clock as the chains move. They'll wind it back into action. That is a huge first down. Oh, right it is there. a big first down. A team that lives and dies by throwing the football in 1992 has to win this game running the football now. 
Vice versa on the side defense, a team that's used to playing throwing teams has to now stop the run. Mike Hanklitz, defensive coordinator, looks on. Oh, my goodness. Ronnie Bradford, as soon as the ball was handed off, was right there to just smack him down. And how in the world he held onto the football, I don't know. Well, they brought everybody, Ron. They're figuring the same thing that Oklahoma's going to run the football. They bring Ronnie Gra Bradford, number 13, off the corner. And Ernest Williams, there was nobody to pick him up. There's, they just didn't have the numbers to pick him up. But the clock is in the favor of Oklahoma, 135 on the clock. Colorado will probably use their timeout after this play. This is the 10th Oklahoma play. Stop for a loss. And last play. Hit at the line of scrimmage. And Williams will be stopped. It's going to be third down. They're going to save their timeout to after third down, it looks like. Now with 1.12 on the clock. Clock running down. And you have to wonder, the people up in Lincoln, who they're pulling for in this one. <laughs> They might can see a tie. They, they, they get they get Colorado up there. Kiel Gundy, the veteran quarterback, is going to use every second on his 25-second clock. Third down. The line to make for the Sooners, the 44. They take it straight ahead, taking no chances of a turnover. Clavel on the stop, and now the timeout is used by Colorado, and we'll take it with him. 38 ticks left on the clock. Oklahoma 24, Colorado 21. A real sports coupe is more than fancy technology. It's the perfect balance between the needs of a driver and the needs of a curve. With a pure focused performance that makes even the same old road seem new. Because it's not the road you take, it's how you take the road. The all new 24 valve Ford Pro GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? Extinct relics of American business remind us that waste and inefficiency don't pay. And that while perhaps it used to be impressive to throw money around, today it's more impressive not to. A timely reminder from the only company that guarantees 1030 overnight delivery for up to 40% less, UPS. When doctors were asked which of these two pain relief formulas they preferred, number one. They chose the goodies formula by more than three to one over BCs, which just might be the reason. Goodies. So many people in the South. Why goodies? Of course. Prefer goodies too. Because goodies has the formula most doctors preferred. And BC doesn't. Try goodies headache powders or extra strength tablets. Fourth down and 11. And Brad Riddell who has been outstanding for the Sooners tonight. Back in punt formation. Dion figures in a single safety. I think you have to go after this punt with only 38 seconds to go. Try to spring somebody here and try to win the ball game right here. Markers all over the place. End over end kick figures with a fair catch at the 25-yard line. I think with the movement of Colorado, Oklahoma jumped, so it should be on Oklahoma. Back them up five more yards and try it again. Mike Fields, number 34, moves just before the snap because of the movement, and that's the penalty. Now, what that does, it gives you a look at their punt formation again that they're using. So, still look for some type of punt rush, punt block rather than return. Penalty pushes it back to the 28. You put somebody over the center, Ron, the long snapper. You want to make sure he knows he's going to get 
smack in the face on the play, and you're hoping for a bad snap and spring somebody up inside. Low pass from center, and a great job to get the kick off even. Figures. Stays on the field to play rather than getting out of bounds with 24 seconds left. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are. We went defense on both sides. How could you not? Aubrey Beavers, Oklahoma, four tackles, one fumble returned for a touchdown and also an interception. And for the Colorado Buffaloes, it is Greg Beaker, 13 tackles and one sack. And as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on their behalf. Deathman, over the middle, ball is tipped. I believe Fourier held on to it. Yes, he did. I think he was going to try to lateral that one, Ron. They need about 25 yards. They've got to get up the field to try this 25 to 30 yards to get themselves in field goal range. He downs it with seven seconds showing on the clock. Colorado with no timeouts remaining. So again not to question the abilities of Mitch Berger who is one of the very best punters in the country but he is having to handle the place kicking chores tonight and a distance field goal by him is a real question mark pass delivered it is caught and out of bounds TJ Cunningham and he is at the 36-yard line. Well, Two gonna seconds get, left. You're going to get a 53-yard uh, field goal attempt, right? With two seconds to go. Mitch Berger will be attempting a field goal of 53 yards, and now it is going to be the shoe on the other foot. You remember last year, Colorado called three timeouts in a row to try to ice the Nebraska kicker and the Sooners have just taken one of their two remaining. Well, I think they'll use their second one also. There's no sense in taking it back to Norman with them. They might as well use that one too. But we talk about streaks, so the streaks on the line here with with one field goal coming up. Immediately following this, the residents in College School Board, they will talk about all the action today. We, we talked about there have been some some real exciting, some upset as usual. Florida State having to come from behind. I hope you were with us earlier today. Chad Brown looking on. Goes back to 1988 since the Colorado Buffaloes have lost a conference game. They've won three straight Big 8 titles. And Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Burgers, the longest field goal made in practice. 58 yards. Now oh, this one is going to be from 53 yards from the far hash mark. You take a look. Those folks in the end zone will be a pretty good barometer. Good pass. Got the distance. So the regular kicker is injured. Mitch Berger, who is one of the best punters in the nation, sends that baby home from 53 yards. And as the clock shows three zeros up there, it is Colorado keeping their big eight win streak alive. And Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? With the man of the second run, what were your thoughts as you came to the line of scrimmage? I better not miss again or nobody will ever let me kick anywhere else. What's the longest kick you'd ever made in your career? 72 in practice, but in a game it was 47. 
when you knew that Vlado had the injury in pregame? Did you know that the pressure was going to be on you here to save the streak? I thought there might be a chance of it, you know. I never really kicked an important kick in college before as far as field goals go, but I just tried to pretend I was on the practice field. I'm only sorry that, you know, I didn't hit that short one so we could win the game. That, I'm thinking about that more than anything. I guess I probably shouldn't, but, I, you know, this is great, though, that I made it. I just, I just wish I would have made the other one, too. Enjoy it. Ron? Okay, Adrian, once again, the final score. Colorado 24 and Oklahoma 24. Stay tuned for the residents in College Football Scoreboard, which follows next. For Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten, I'm Ron Franklin saying good night from Boulder, Colorado. Now let's go to Chris Fowler in our scoreboard studios. All right, thank you very much, Ron, Mike, and Adrian. You talk about some great games today. The finish with Florida.